Hey everybody, what's going on? And welcome back to another collectible past where it is collecting for life. Absolutely collecting for life. And uh, of course, we are joined as always by wonderful assortment of co-hosts. Uh, Vinny, what's going on, Vinny? Yeah, man. Toys controls our lives. Part of the collective. It's toys, it's toys that close you. It's toys that feed you. <laughs> Toys compel us. <laughs> and of course, we joined. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, how's everyone doing tonight? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm hanging in there. Uh, let's find out how our other co host, uh, Slasher McSplitter, how you doing, good sir? About the scene. <laughs> hanging in there. <laughs> Sometimes that's all we can do. Uh, let's say hi to the lovely people in the chat real quick before we get started. Guys, remember to go ahead and share the links out there. Uh, be sure to smash the like button. Let everybody know we're here because YouTube likes to play the silly ass games. Chaos Hoy, first one in the house. What's going on, Chaos Hoy? Had a wonderful yeah. conversation with Chaos Hoy on Tuesday on Cage Talks. Uh, chat recommended. So, uh, yeah, Chaos, uh, thanks for uh, popping in. I'm glad you had a good time. And, uh, yeah, I'll definitely have to get you on and have some more talks. Uh, maybe have some talks with some more people in the chat because I'm not scared to have talks with people from the chat. Toy Mafia in the house as well. What's going on, Toy Mafia? I hope nice. that you're doing well. Uh, Papa in the house, black pilling and everything. What's going on, Papa? You know what? Nicole Brown's last words were, oh, Papa. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, shit. Who else? I, I know I've seen somebody else's in there. Oh, there he is. Uh, Time Profit, also in the house. What's going on, Time Profit? Good to see you. Soy Base Jeremy, what's going on, man? Good to see you. Uh, glad to get big. Oh, no, no, you can't eat the guinea pig. No, that's no good. That's no good. We're going to have to cleanse you uh, with burning fire. Make sure we get all the remnants out of our people, out of your system. Uh, there, there's no eating our friends here. Uh <laughs> We're getting ready to have some toy fun. Uh, I did come prepared. Um, Vinny, would you like me to kick this one off? Yeah, that'd be great. All right, awesome. So uh, this is another toy that I've actually had in my collection. Now, a number of weeks ago, I did show off the movie versions of these figures, and those ones were a lot of fun. Uh, some issues, so I had to dig back into the ones that are more comic booky, cartoony feeling. And those are the ones that I'm pulling out right now. So if you remember that show from weeks ago, you probably know what I'm leaning into. But then again, maybe mm -hmm. you don't. But here we go. Welcome back. This is where we're hanging out with Rorschach, the superhero pig. Get ready to take a look at something that is superhero related. This one coming by way of NECA in conjunction with King Features. We got the original superheroes. We've got Flash Gordon. And there was another version of Flash Gordon that I did pick up. See the back of the box art right there. I did pick up this version as well. I will not be opening this one, this big carded one. Uh, it's essentially the same as this figure with a few color variances. And, of course, not as many accessories as the one in the box comes with. So the one in the box is the one we're going to open up and take a look at it. Here we go. Pathetic earthlings. Who can save you now? Here we go with Flash Gordon right out of the box in a nice static pose. Here we go with Flash Gordon in a bit of a pose, getting ready to duke it out with the bad guys. You can see some of the points of articulation, and as we get through the review, you're going to be able to see the rest of them. So let's get out some more of his accessories. Here we go with him in a bit of a wide stance right there, showing off some of the other points of articulation, seeing all the movement up in the arms, the bend in the wrists, and of course the other hand that's a grasping hand for the blaster, which in case you can't tell, is tucked away 
in his belt holster. Here we go with Flash in a bit of a kneeling position. Of course, he's got his gun out and he's firing away. It does come with a really cool blast effect. It comes with a couple of different blast effects. Uh, really difficult to get him into the kneeling position because he has on the waist what uh, Vinny likes to call the diaper. Kind of turn the lights down and of course we've got a snake light it being behind so we kind of show off that blast effect just a little bit. We go with another pose with Flash Gordon showing off some of the articulation. Unfortunately, this articulation is not good enough to allow him to stand on his tippy toe without some kind of additional aid. That's why I got the mini base in the front foot. Uh, we also have a secondary blast effect right there. It's a, a long shot blast effect where it's actually bouncing off a surface or another character. Uh, I will say uh, NECA absolutely dropped the fucking ball on that one because the way they actually designed it, there's a notch out at the bottom of the blast effect that goes over the gun that's supposed to fit over the end sight of the gun. It does not fit, so this damn thing falls off consistently and quite often. Absolute crap as far as quality is control is considered with that accessory. After these messages, we'll be right back. Yeah, classic Mecca. Yeah, you can tell why I got these guys up in the uh, the front of the queue. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I tend to start off with the rage reviews first. And get Which into is always the fun. <laughs> when I start losing my mind, everybody has a blast. You, you stop that, Poppy. You stop that right now, you son of a bitch. I'm going to come down the freaking where you're at. I know where you're at. Don't make me come to find you, you son of a you good damn son of a bitch. I don't believe in God, but then bacon proves there is a God. I'm confused. Oh, Jesus, you guys. What's wrong with y'all? Supposed to fall out. The bullet doesn't stay in the gun. It's not even supposed to be bullets. He's supposed to have, like, blasters or something. But the blast effect, absolutely, it, it's shit the way it's designed. And so is the other one that goes on the gun. They've mm -hmm. got the notch out for that top sight on the gun, and neither one port on correctly. It, it just it irritates me irritates me to high heavens and then the fact that he's supposed to have boot cuts yeah and one side kind of works a little bit the other side doesn't move at all absolutely doesn't move at all the toes were really weak so there was no balancing them on his toes there there was just so many misses on this figure that sucks ass <clears throat> I do, I do have a second part to it, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and get to the second part so we can get the complete overall um, breakdown that I have during the uh, review of this figure. Um, I, I don't think it's any worse than what I start off, but then again, I can't remember because I was raging during this yeah. review. Blind rage, <laughs> that's what happens. You, you don't – yeah, you forget everything. You don't know what you struck. Well, here's the thing that I do with every last one of these reviews, and I know most of these other guys that do toy reviews, they, they take the toy out, they look the toy over, they play with it for a while, and then they do their review. I don't do that. I do blind reviews. So when I put them out on the table and I say, hey, we're getting it, getting into this, it's the first time I'm opening that package for that toy, and it's the first time I'm checking it out. That's, I, that's how I do it too, bro. So yeah. many of these other guys, they take them out and they look at them over first and then they do the review. And I'm like, no, no, I, I don't want to do it that way. I want to get a gut reaction. Like, how do I feel when I first open this up? I don't want to sit there and think about, oh, well, this isn't that bad if you just mm -hmm. ignore all the other problems. No, I want a gut reaction every time I open these up because I think that's the best way to inform anybody else who's thinking about getting these figures. Yep how they're going to feel when they first open up. Because I'd hate to sit there and say, oh, this is a great toy because yeah. I looked it over for two or three weeks before doing my review, and these are the finer points, and I'm yeah. going to ignore all the bad points? Nah. Nah, nah. that's not yeah. the way to do yeah, it. Yeah, I, I can't do it that way either. There's some figures. I'll I'll open them if it's it's coinciding with another figure, but I'm not fidgeting with them and everything. I kind of just, like, put it aside. Like, I'll just – I'll have them in for, like, one, one or two shots and be like, yeah, I'll be reviewing this soon. But I don't really mess with it anymore. I just kind of like leave it because I got so many other things I'm juggling all the time. But I'm like you, man. I, I rather just do the full review, bam, right there, like, you know, on, on the moment. I think that's the best way. Uh, Slasher, your thoughts? Uh, uh, they, look, they look cool. I know I saw, I saw the preview video, but I, I thought they looked uh, – that one in. All right, I won't spoil your uh, other thing. Sorry. Yeah, well, I mean, anybody that did catch the short and knew about the show, they know what's coming up, and uh, it's not that much of a spoiler. But uh, 
Yeah, and that that's one thing I will get into on the second half of this review. I think a little bit. I'm pretty sure I still touched on it. Is they look amazing. The look is there. Yeah, it's it's the quality control and the finer points that yeah. NECA absolutely I, I, missed. I know the sculptor. <laughs> I don't get it. They did such a marvelous job on yeah. the Phantom. Because oh, when I yeah. had the Phantom one, that it, that thing was perfect all the way through. I didn't have one complaint really about that one. Yeah, because you know what it is? That means the, the Phantom was the first one that he sculpted, and the other ones, they reused the body and then just added the new parts. You know what I mean? I, You know what? I do think Phantom was number one in the series because yep. the, the, next, the, the next one after Flash, uh, spoiler alert, if you didn't catch the uh, – the, the short already it's going to be mink but uh he's number three and flash yeah. is number two so mm -hmm. yeah yep all right let, let's get into the second half and then uh, uh i want to get everybody's overall thoughts of this one okay now back to our program pose with flash gordon walking and now you can see he's got his last two accessory pieces he's got his sword and his scabbard here we go with one more with flash gordon using both hands to wield his sword. I, I will say overall, this is a very nice looking figure, but there are a lot of huge misses in articulation on this one and the way some of the accessories work. Uh, number one, there is a bit of a problem with some of the toes on these things. Like they, they bend, but they're so weak, like so incredibly weak. They, they almost feel like they're going to break uh, another problem that I found with this one is in the arm joints up here. He does have a bit of a problem with the one arm joint where it feels extremely weak in the elbow. Now, if I can only get the sword out of his hand. Um, this, this joint right here is very floppy and very weak. It shouldn't be like that. Quality control, NECA. Quality control. Uh, I waited so long to be able to review this one because it looks absolutely terrific. The one that was that I did for the Phantom, there I had no issues with that one whatsoever. This one, I am finding all kinds of issues, and it really is a sh it really is sad because it is quite an amazing looking figure. Once again, NECA got quality control with this shit. Look at that, can't even stand on his own. Ugh. Anyway, guys, uh, even though this one look, looks nice, uh, he's got some okay looking accessories. Uh, he's got the different head mold. Ah, uh, because of the lack of detail, finer detail, especially with the articulation and with some of the accessories not working that the way they should, the absolute best that I can give this one is a 7 out of 10. And it's sad because it looks amazing for that cartoon-esque, um, almost cartoon-looking version, the comic version of Flash Gordon. It, it just is a shame. But 7 out of 10 is the best we can give it. Anyway, guys, that is all we have on this one. What did you think about our assessment of this figure? Be sure to let Rorschach, the superhero pig, know what you thought. Yeah, it's a damn shame when it's just like, it just misses the mark by a little bit. It's like... Uh, yeah, because because if you say it's their quality control is shit, it, it it just it really pissed me off. I go no Flash Gordon. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember watching a Flash Gordon uh, Condor Man double feature matinee when I was getting nice. Um, yeah, uh, he, of course he has a problem with his joints. He crashed into Mongo in a makeshift ship. <laughs> you know, I just recently rewatched that old cartoon too, Time Profit, because I was trying to get in the mood, like to get ready to do the review. And yeah, <laughs> yeah. A little bit, a little bit upset about this one. Uh, and the only reason it's getting uh, seven pigs uh, out of ten, uh, I'm not giving them any ducks or chickens or goats. Uh, the only reason it's getting seven out of ten is just because the likeness is there. That is it. Everything yeah. else was a miss. That is disappointing. Are you getting the, the other Defenders of the Earth as well? Probably not. Probably not. I waited so, like I said, I waited so long due to review on this one. Yeah. And after the Phantom, I was like, man, this 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 one should be great. It should be great. It should be just like the Phantom. It's, mm -hmm. it's the basic same body mold. I'm thinking like this is going to be great. And then issues, issues. And I was like, 
Well, I guess that's the last time I'm going to be getting them. Like, no, thank you. If they're all going to be like that, uh-uh. Yeah, I give them one gold hamster. <laughs> <laughs> one gold dropping. <laughs> right? Uh, someone should do a watch party for Condor Man. I, I don't oh, think yeah, I that would be cool. Yeah, I, what I was say, Condor Man? What was that? Was that a Japanese one? No. Is there a Japanese one kind of like Condor Man? Something no. like that. Uh, what's that that actor? He uh, he did the Broadway stage um, a fan of the opera for a long time. Um, oh, I can't remember the guy's name. No idea. He was he, he was a good good actor, but yeah, Condor Man was crazy. It's the one he had that big condor suit, and it, he had the first um, like that gliding kind of contraption. You remember uh, the the second Batman bo- movie uh, when he was on the roof and he, and he yeah yeah wings? and basically Condor Man has something like that, but the wingspan is even bigger. And yeah, and he, and he <laughs> like, I think he, it starts off with him jumping off the Eiffel Tower or some shit like that. It, it was crazy. I'm mistaken that was some Japanese one. I can't remember the name. I think so. You're talking about the one where they had the white bird helmet suit? Wasn't that a cartoon, though? Yeah. The gotcha man. Did they make a the live gotcha action man. of that? Well, what the hell was it called in the States again? Ba- Battle for the Planets? or They had like three different names. I believe yeah, Battle... I, I... Ba- yeah, I think Battle for the Planets or some shit was one of the names. I forget. I, I remember I seeing a little bit when I was younger because I used to watch Star Blazers. So I would catch some of the other stuff. They weren't my favorites. I really like Star Blazers. Like yeah. after Star Blazers, oh, over, I may, may watch one or two and I'm like, nah. There was supposed to be an animated movie of those things, the Gotcha Man thing. And they had a couple of like uh, like a test trailer and it looked phenomenal. And like it, it never went anywhere. The yeah, Battle of the Planets was Gotcha Man in, in Japanese. Okay. I'm remembering Thanks. some seeing some Japanese one that was it, like the way it looked is similar to the '70s Spider-Man uh, TV shows, the the miniseries they had. Okay, yeah, the this one had the that TV, vibe, the but... TV movies, whatever it was. Yeah, he had a it was very nice, like the way it was out on the street and like brightly lit, but it still looked dark for some reason. Yeah. So, uh, Time Prophet also said uh, Michael Crawford. <laughs> yeah, that's the man was in a sitcom called Some Mothers Do Have Them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, was, uh, Papa, uh, uh, Connor Man, uh, 1981 family comedy. Yep. Yeah, I remember. It was oh, 81? Movie. Okay, because this one I saw, this thing that I'm remembering did not look 80s at all. It just looked 70s as well. Yeah, I, I remember that 70s Spider Man <laughs> time profit. That mm-hmm. was a lot of fun. Yeah, I like uh, that. So um, I'm going to get into the, uh, the next uh, two segments. Um, Obviously, uh, we know who this is going to be. Uh, we already had Flash, but this is another one. It it falls short, and it, it's another one that I was really, really pissed off about. Um, I, I don't know how pissed off it comes off in the review, but I was quite fucking livid at this point. Uh, here we go. Clytus, I'm bored. What plaything can you offer me today? Welcome back again. We are hanging out with Rorschach, the superhero pig. What's up, Rorschach? Oh, Rorschach's hanging out, and of course, you know what that means. It's superhero related. So, from NECA, in conjunction with King's Features, we got the original superheroes, we got Flash Gordon, we got Ming, the Merciless. 33 points of articulation. Uh, Another one that I've had for quite some time, finally getting around to doing this review. And much like the Flash Gordon and the Phantom, I feel that this one is pretty much going to fall in line with how those ones perform. But you never know. Let's go ahead and get this one out of the box and take a look at it. We go right out of the box with Ming the Merciless. Uh, This one is very much almost the same type of mold as the Phantom and the Flash Gordon one. Uh, I will say that the arm joints on this one, they feel a little bit sturdier on this side, but not this side. So it was the opposite for Flash Gordon. This one feels a little weaker. This one feels fine. Another problem, a huge defect right here in the toe. Like this is as far down as it goes. It doesn't go flat where this other side goes completely flat. No problem whatsoever. And it's actually a nice, nice tight toe joint right there. This one. Kind of loose, doesn't even go very far up because it, it's all fucked up. 
Like, seriously, NECA, what is up with that shit? Uh, he does come with a nice soft cloak on the back, which, you know, once again, uh, kind of cheaply done. They just kind of cut the material. No wire or nothing like that, so it just kind of hangs in the back. Uh, cheap, cheap NECA. Uh, let's see what else that man comes with. I know who you are. Just like the Flash Gordon, he has a lot of the same articulation, double jointed knees, double jointed elbows, uh, pivots at the wrist and turn. Uh, decent rockers and pivots down at the feet. Uh, he does have toe joint manipulation, which is kind of eh, iffy at best, especially on the one side where it doesn't turn at all, NECA. Uh, the ball joints up at the hips that actually do turn and move up a little bit, but unfortunately you have, as once again, as Benny says, the restrictive diaper around the waist, which kind of limits his legs actually moving up. He could turn at the waist, He's got that T-joint waist cut, and then of course he's got a nice ball and turn up at the head. Um, overall, not bad looking. Of course, the gun, he has the gun in his hand. This can go in his holster, and he does come with the same blast effects that Flash Gordon did. This single joint, this single blast, and then of course that big long one, which is a piece of junk, and the same as the Flash Gordon, is not cut properly to actually fit on the gun. So I'm not even gonna bother showing that one off again. After these messages, we'll be right back. Yeah, dude, that's that's aggravating shit, man. And, and, and you know what? Don't get me wrong. Uh, that was probably like the third or fourth take because the other takes were just me cursing. And uh, I, I didn't think that that would really going to get the point across to how badly NECA did on this. Uh, yeah. You know what? Cursing like a dock worker is fine for some things, but I'm thinking for the toy reviews to get my point across, just cursing like a maniac might not do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, I think it's still entertaining. Uh, and, and sometimes I'm, I'm, they force my hand as well. And uh, there's no getting around that. I'm just going to say that right now. Nope. All right, um, let, let's get into the second half, and then uh, the floor, as they say, is yours. Uh, yeah, did they take a Ninja Turtle and stick Ming's head on top of it? Yeah, I don't remember Ming having muscles like that. No, it, like even in the old cartoon, I mean, he had a little bit, but not that much. No, and he's that shredded? No. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, what's up, Bone? Good to see you. Well, that, that's because they just reused a single mold over and over yeah. Yeah, because that's what they want to do. That's what these companies like to do. If they can save some money, they're going to do it. And that means I, they didn't really, they didn't believe in this line. I always thought it was funny with the uh, uh, Thundercats when <laughs> how they made the Mumra figure so huge, and <laughs> I mean the Mumra figure when he's in a robe is so tiny compared to the other one that actually has the, you know, the trigger on the back where he smashes his hands. Yeah. It was pretty horrible. He's supposed to be small, wasn't he? Was he that much smaller in the cartoon? The mummy one? I don't remember. The yeah. mummy, the no, mummy was one was smaller. Much smaller. But... I mean yeah, taller. But... I mean like taller ones. No, nah, he was like a Mishi. He was tiny. That's why it was so cool when he when he called, when he he summons the spears to turn him uh, into a mummy of the ever-living. Ancient forces of evil. <laughs> Transform this decayed form. But I remember my, my friend, Mumra, the ever living. Yeah. All my friends had the all my friends had the, the regular Mumra figure, and then another another one of my friends had the mummy one. I was like, whoa, this is fucking small compared for like for a Thundercats figure. Yeah, yeah, because he came with the uh there was like a play set that had I don't remember what he came with. I just remember. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it was the yeah, play it was set. Called, yeah, he had the sarcophagus thing, and I think he had like the, oh, okay, like, like the uh, like the like the circle part. I think too. I only knew one kid that had it back back in the day, and I yeah. It's, I was, See, I never knew he was part of a place that or whatever. Yeah, that's the only way you could get him. That's why no one had him. Well, it was like originally a Wiley Kit and Wiley Cat. They came with something else. They didn't originally. They didn't come by themselves. Yeah, one came with Chitara, and one came with uh, Tiger. And then I think they re-released them together at one point, I want to say. But I, I, I know they, it, they, they, they each did, came with, with one of the other ones. Did um, I also did wasn't did a Snarf, oh, sorry. Did, Snarf, did Snarf come with Lion or did he come with uh, Panthera? No, he came with Lion. Came with Lion. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, Slasher, go ahead. No, I was going to say I wasn't a collector of Thundercats. Like my knowledge of Thundercats was going to a friend's house and seeing them. You know, like, 
<laughs> they have a bunch of them. My friends, they have like silver hawks and shit. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to collect this. It, was, it looked cool, but it was just another thing to get into and distract me from what I wanted to collect. Yep. I mean, they, they got um the newer versions I've seen of the Silver Hawks look really cool, but like oh, it's yeah? the same thing. I like wasn't I wasn't huge into them when I was growing up. I remember them, but yeah, Let the me new guess, ones though, they don't have the action, right? They don't have. Uh, the I I don't think they have action, but they do look really nice, and they got tons of articulation. Um, the super yeah, seven. The whole point. I, of I those think it, yeah, I think it is Super Seven. The whole point of those figures was the action. Yeah, but but what they left out, they didn't give them the metallic finish. Yeah, they didn't do that either. Come on. Yep, I was. That's why I didn't get them. I, 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 I thought about it. I'm like, well, I'll get at least one or two because there's a couple of characters I do like in that series. But I'm like, nope, not gonna do it because they didn't do it right. Uh, was poor profit. Uh, uh, many of us still are. We, we just yeah, those fake figures it. weren't cheap back in the fucking eighties. They weren't cheap. Well, you know yeah. what? Like, I, I talk to people about that all the time. Like, uh, you know, especially the Transformers, and, you know, the price of those ones, like that and GoBots and some of the other ones. I mean, they they seem like they were relatively cheap by today's standards. But back then, Optimus Prime for $20, that that was a decent chunk of well, money. Well, that's also that, the Transformers, though. It's because they're different sizes, so you also get different price ranges, you know? Right, right. Yeah, because the uh, small mini cars were only like two ninety nine dollars or something like that. Um, regular GoBots were four ninety nine because they were slightly bigger than the mini cars. The twin packs of the cassette tapes for Soundwave, which was like Ravage and Rumble and Laserbeak and Frenzy, they were going for four ninety nine, the same as the GoBots. Then you got what was like your large Autobot cars; they were at nine ninety nine, and then the Jets were eleven ninety nine. And then later on, you know, by the time they came out with uh, Megatron and Prime, they they were twenty. Uh, Soundwave was somewhere around fourteen ninety nine, I believe it was. And by the time they get into the later waves, like the second generation, some of those prices went up. So the Dinobots were, I think they were right around fourteen ninety nine by then, because they they had, they had all jumped at price a little bit. But yeah, even a twenty dollar toy back then, that was a lot of money, really. Yeah. It was. So but, um, like, yeah, yeah, and they had some are... really expensive ones, like those friggin' uh, <coughs> the, oh, those, what were those ones? Oh, in humanoids, the big ones. Yeah, you had the big, the 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 ones that were supposed to be the monsters. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I mean, it was the same thing. What um, Takara found out early on. I mean, uh, late seventies, it, it it was too pricey to make those big twelve inch figures. Because they started off the back of the original GI Joe line, and yeah, I remember the Cyborg line, and it, it was it was too expensive. That's when remember, they shrunk it down and they created the Microman. I remember GI Joes. The most you would find them for was like four ninety nine, and that depended on the store you went to. A lot of the stores around here was three ninety nine. That was the most you would uh, pay for a uh, not not a vehicle or anything, mm -hmm. just a Joe, just a Joe figure. Well, you know, you know what? I have the memories of the the original Star Wars figures when they first came out. That you know, uh, you know how much they were in, in in the stores when they first came out. About the same. Dollar seventy five. Oh. oh, damn. <laughs> nice. I I remember that shit, man. As a matter of fact, I still have a couple card backs. Mm -hmm. In my back room from the, my original collection, where it's still got the dollar seventy five uh, sticker on them. Can we go back to those prices, please? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Can we keep today's current um, value of money and just go back to those prices? I think we'd be okay then. But I remember the um, the LJN wrestlers; those things were not cheap either. They were like ten bucks. Yeah, they were like nine ninety nine. Yeah. Yep. It's funny because they were the cheapest things to make. Yeah. <laughs> Zero out. articulation. Yep. One Barely any of them actually looked like the fucking guy that they're supposed yeah. to be. Dude, it's crazy. And basically, it was just like they just paid for paint, essentially. It's it was basically just a doggy toy. Yeah. <laughs> you get a Hulk Hogan <laughs> doggy toy. Oh, shit. <laughs> and don't let the dogs get it. And what's going on? Scrambles, man. Good to see you. Hey, Scrambles. Uh, I'm at work that's training someone. Can't chat much. Uh, no worries. Uh, thanks. Thanks for being here. I mean, that's that's all that matters. Uh, I really do appreciate you guys spending your time with us Absolutely. more than you realize. Yep. But um, I'll, I'll get into the second part of Ming here, and then, uh, like I said, I hand it off to you, Vinny. All so right. here, here we go.
Now, back to our program. <laughs> Here we go with Ming and another pose, just basking in his evil glory. Uh, he does come with two extra hands on this one. This one is actually showing off the ring really nice on there. And unlike Flash Gordon, he does actually have boot cuts. So uh, show off the hands right there with the, the ring on it. Uh, that's pretty cool. Got them evil clawed looking hands. Uh, the detailing on this face is absolutely outstanding. I, I think this one looks really, really nice. They did a good job with the mold on that. Uh, this hand, while kind of cool, uh, really another one that dropped the ball neck of this thing just kind of falls out. There's really nothing holding this one in. It barely sits in there at all. You may start turning the wrist, it starts pulling out of the joint. Uh, another huge quality control miss right there. Here we go with the last of Ming's accessories. As you can see, he's got that big sword and scabbard that ports in onto the side. And yeah, that is a gold colored chain that's actually sitting on that scabbard. A uh, nice little accessory. One last shot with Ming right here. Got his sword out, which uh, was one more hand, which uh, this hand was not made very well to be able to get the sword into his hand. Uh, actually had the top of the blade pop off the hilt, off the basket hilt. Uh, luckily it was like a little pin that actually, and there's a hole in the center of the blade. You just put it right back on, you glue it back in place, but it, it should have never happened. The hand should have been opened just slightly more to be able to accept the hilt of this freaking sword. And it just wasn't, once again, quality control. Problems, neck of problems with this shit. Uh, I think the, you know, the secondary face, once again, I think the secondary face is really good detailing on that. It looks pretty cool. The sword looks really cool, even with the little, like, gem that they have at the very tip of the sword. All that is really cool. The clawed hand, all that stuff is pretty amazing. Like, the, the figure looks nice. But when all the accessories don't match up to the look of what should be in the quality of the figure... You absolutely miss me on this one. Much like the Flash Gordon, the best I'm giving this one is 7 out of 10. Wait, guys, that is all we have on this one. What did you think of our assessment of this figure? Do you think we were harsh? Do you think we were spot on? Uh, as usual, we always try to give a very fair and honest review on all these things because we have some integrity, which some of the other reviewers I noticed do not have. But... Overall, though, uh, this one does look like Ming the Merciless, so we do enjoy that aspect of it, and it is really a shame it took this long to get around to this review, but better late than never. Anyway, guys, be sure to let Rorschach, the superhero pig, know what you thought about this one. Yeah, I mean, all the elements are there. He does look good on his shelf, but like you said, loose, uh, like, plug in for the hand uh these, these like minor little things like you said it's quality control that figure suffered just from that alone you know it it, it absolutely did and let me tell you that freaking sword popping out of that freaking basket hilt oh boy did that fucking yeah. the, i i thought Aggravate. it broke at first and i like i started flipping shit and i was like oh wait a minute just popped out uh real quick uh stop for a second uh uh welcome uh trina what's up trina hey trina going on uh jp's tabernacle what's going on uh the full size ljn or the thumb wrestlers the <laughs> i remember full the size, thumb <laughs> those thumb wrestlers those thumb wrestlers yeah i had they a few cool, matter of fact yeah, i, I did, think I, I think i still have a few i had nice. some. yeah those those were cool man i did like them because you you could grab a bunch of them and and take them somewhere those bigger ones were harder to like if you want to go hang out with friends and stuff. It's like you couldn't just like you could beat out. someone with one of those old uh, fucking. Oh, for sure, dude. Ones. Damn right, yeah. Somebody's breaking in your house. You just wing Hulk Hogan like across. Fucking the slapjack. <laughs> not, not even just hold it by the leg. It's whap whap. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit! His hand comes off with flash cuts off. <laughs> it's I remember, yeah, I had a hillbilly gym. That thing could have definitely killed someone. Oh yeah. Oh, that King Kong Bundy one. That thing that should have oh. just said on the fucking box, warning, murder weapon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Soul Assassin? Good to What's see up, you. man? Oh, uh, cool. <laughs> What's up, Soul Assassin? No, I'm not. I'm, it's cool. I've heard that word in years. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, you know, JP's absolutely uh, the sculpt work that they did on the face. Yep. And and some of the accessories look really nice. But once again, when the shit doesn't work as it should, um, yeah, that's when we have big problems. Big problems. Yeah. And uh, like I said, this is probably the second or third take I did on it because, yeah, cursing. A lot of cursing. Yeah. Yeah, because the sculptor, I mean, he knows what he's doing. He did a fantastic job. Uh, he did the majority of those gargoyle figures as well. And beautiful. But, again, if it's the quality control, because, like, oh, yeah, just do this, just do that. And then, like, yeah, we'll try and we'll, we'll use the extra part for the disc that has the plug in. And, yeah, no problem. And that's what happens. Uh, if it's something completely from scratch, it's going to be more perfect. Like you said, the Phantom figure that you reviewed, he was the first in the, in the line. So all the love and attention went into him and those other figures. They kind of got the shit under the stick, so to speak. It just really is a shame. Like, uh, once again, yeah. like, uh, there's so many elements of these two figures that were just absolutely outstanding. And if, if the attention to detail in the face and some of the other accessories wasn't there... Mm -hmm. These things probably would have got a five for all the problems that they had. Yeah. And that 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 stupid diaper. That oh, stupid diaper. I oh. hate that so much on figures. The diapers are the worst thing, man, because it's usually made out of a different material. And it, those things degrade over time too, that kind of rubbery shit. Um yeah, it's just it, it pisses me off. But here's the thing again. You get those figures in, they come into the office, and you look at all that stuff. It's like the peg hole for the wrist. That's when you go, okay, you make a note for China. This needs to be like a tenth of an inch thicker. That way it's, it'll pour into the arm better. Um, the diaper thing, it's too soft and it's floating. We need to fix that. You need to put a pin somewhere and, and, and glue it in another spot or use material that's a little bit thicker. There's like a certain breakdown that you do. And they get that list and then they send you another uh, production sample. And as long as it, it meets their requirements, then you, you okay, time to mass produce. You know. So how many different versions is this uh, of, that you've shown of Flash Gordon these past couple weeks? You showed well, the movie, uh, that's 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 the three this of them. Earth one, and now this one. Yeah, but yeah, yeah there so was the other one too. There was two. There was uh, in the beginning of that review, you had there's, well, so there's, yeah. there's, there's what four of him, I think. Well, I have three. I have three Flash Gordon. So I have the movie one, and I have these two that I showed off here. Uh, both of these are technically both um, – well, one is actually original superheroes, mm -hmm. which is technically part of the Defenders of the Earth toy mm -hmm. line as well. Yeah. And then the other one I have, I think that one is just listed as old school Flash Gordon. It's supposed right. to be more like the cartoon And version. there's a two-pack with Flash Gordon and Ming that's comic book uh, related as well, which I oh. – yeah, I, I filmed it for a short uh, a couple weeks ago, a month ago, something like that. Um, yeah, so there's at least four of those Flash Gordons. Uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with the ones I have. I just, like I said, I wish they would have got this one right. I, I was so excited to freaking review this one, and mm -hmm. after all the fun that I had with the other one, even with the misses that the movie one had, I, I really thought that this one was going to be even better, and it just wasn't. Yeah. yeah, I'd say so far the best one, the best looking ones are the movie one. It, mm -hmm. It's sad. It's sad because, I, like, once again, the sculpt work, like Vinny says, he you know, those guys that does a lot of the sculpt work stuff, that sculpt work on those faces for these figures was outstanding. Yep. Absolutely outstanding. It's just, yeah, everything else. Just, and that, like, that toe, that freaking, that pivot on the toe for freaking Ming. Like mm -hmm. that thing is all jacked up. It, it's like it's screwed up bad. You can feel like it. It almost feels like they made the pinhole sideways and they jammed the pin into the oh, toe, shit. and it, that's why it doesn't move right. Like what a piece of junk. Uh, <laughs> Trina's laughing about diaper. Uh, Biden walks in. Uh, time prophecies for any British people. Um, a diaper is a nappy. <laughs> that's right. Wouldn't yep. they be better off just making the 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 foot just completely flat? Wouldn't they be better off that way? It, 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 I, I think they would have, quite honestly, yeah. for this one. I think mm -hmm. it would have been better if it would have been yeah. just a flat foot. But with the, all the pivot and rock and the feet, they didn't need it. I think the reason why they did it was like competition. I, with I'd probably get kicked out of the fucking boardroom if I said that. Well, <laughs> no, Vinny, Vinny, you're absolutely right. <laughs> the competition because on the front of the packaging – they made sure to put in letters that you would see 33 points of articulation. Yeah. There you go. 
like I said, it's always going to be that rivalry because those people, they came from McFarland. Like, you know, Randy that's running NECA, a lot of the sculptors, um, the paint department. Like, I, I look at the names in those boxes. I'm like, oh, I, I know a lot of these folks. Uh, Benny, oh, I work with them. you want to take this one? What? The detail on the <clears throat> face was almost – yeah, McFarlane asked. Yeah, but it, it, what's ironic, though, uh, I don't think he did anything for McFarlane, that, that particular sculptor. I've known him from, from other stuff. Um, he did work at Art Asylum, and then, yeah, and he did a lot of work for NECA, but uh, he definitely has that style, you know, um, and the guy could do realism as well. So it, it's cool stuff, though. Oh, that uh, – I did do a, a review – not a review, a quick short of, like, a – two and a half foot uh, Deadpool that was in the window of a store. He made that Deadpool as well. Uh, it, it was, it was sick, but I, yeah, I wasn't even going to attempt to ask a price. Uh, yeah. That, that store was a rip off and a half that the thing was, um, it's a tourist trap in the mall. Uh, some little fucking like boutique store that your regular neck of figures, they charge $60 for <laughs> starting yeah. price. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a bag of D's so you can choke lay my off. balls out on the counter. Yeah. Uh, and, and by the way, uh, Vinny uh, got Trina all fired up. Uh, I remember when I first started watching Tommy and Vinny, and Vinny would always call it the diaper area. I told him it's called the pelvis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, being someone who knows anatomy, yeah, I, I know what a pelvis is. But they literally had diapers on these characters. It drove, especially McFarland. Oh, go back and look at some of those reviews. Todd was like n n notorious for that. It's just like this floating diaper. I'm like, oh, what? well, you need to, you need to put the diaper on them. How else are they gonna hold in all the tuna? Yeah, it depends. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I I brought back a good number of McFarland figures early on. I I was infuriated with them. what he had done. Um, yeah, the shit was it's crazy, but. Uh, I do have some figures we're going to be reviewing here, so let me uh, let me whip this out. So we have uh, I, I got the Doc Ock. You saw him in uh, the Spider-Man reviews. I figured let me uh, let me break into this one because um, this guy was a pretty cool figure. I had him sitting in the box for a while now. Uh, I just uh, like you, Tommy. I didn't have a chance to review him, but uh, he is a nice figure. Uh, packaging at first glance looks okay, but Still really aggravating that there wasn't a window uh, to actually see the figure himself. And uh, he only has a couple of shortcomings. Overall, pretty solid figure. Um, I'll, I'll give them that. The thing that I notice, and it's some kind of a trend that um, they're doing with Marvel Legends, and I believe it's just to save money. They're not doing any kind of wash or dry brush on paint anymore. It's like they're molding them in solid colors. So his coat's uh, is, a solid it color. Is that all related to their loss of profits, you think? I do think so. It's crazy because they're getting better with the technology for, um, like, the real scans or the, the heads, and, you know, the faces and stuff, and the printing, the digital printing that they're doing now on the faces. They're getting great with that, and then they take such shortcuts everywhere else. It's I don't know. It's, it's a little bit odd. Um, but for the most part, uh, it is very adequate for what these guys are. Look how bad this packaging is, by the way. When you open up a figure, this is not what you want to see. There's uh, nothing holding it insecure except for like these these tabs and things, and they're in tissue paper. Uh, you know, uh, we we know that they're supposed to be getting away from this. I, I'm assuming that this thing must have been the end of the production line before they're changing over. I yeah, I believe so because they phase they phase out a whole bunch of other stuff already. Um, the new GI Joes are hitting, and they're already in the in the proper packaging again with the window. Um, yeah, but you know what, like I said, for what they are, uh, still pretty damn nice. Uh, the material, whatever it was that they used to make the tentacles, uh, those are fantastic, sturdy. Uh, you might, you have to use a little bit of force in order to actually get them in the, into the right, uh, positions as well, how you want to display them. Um, and it does hold, like he could hold, those arms could hold up the figure. So if you want them to stand up properly, you could do that. And that's where they gave you the extra uh, tentacle hands or arms or whatever you want to, or yeah, the hand part. Um, so you have two of them that are articulated like this. So you could open up. And those are technically the ones that go on the top left and the top right. Um, he does have alternate hands. So that's cool that they added those. Very nicely sculpted. 
but again, just solid plastic. Um, and uh, yeah, my biggest gripe were his glasses. Uh, I think they look too narrow on his face. Something, it wasn't sitting right, but it's pinned and glued. You can't take it off. Uh, that's the only thing that kind of throws it off because his likeness, it is there. But it, again, it makes, because of the glasses, it makes his face a little more narrow than it should have been. Um, but uh, yeah, for an octopus Doc Ock, figure this is really nice I, I was pretty impressed by this guy uh head movement is fantastic ball joint in there um i think there's like a dumbbell one at the base of the neck as well uh arms go all the way around ball joint there um uh, bicep cut single um hinge for the elbow but it has the pivot in there so it's almost like the old school kind of neck of figures um when they did something similar he has the uh, standard uh, wrist joint um he has the hula hoop action it's at the bottom um and yeah the uh the, the metal um well it's supposed to be metal for his waist it's that's like a softer plastic it's just kind of floating so you could slide it down or up a little bit depending how you want it to sit to look more accurate to the to the movie splits kind of okay um doc Ock ain't doing any splits um not not in real life anyway uh he's got the upper thigh uh, cut he's got double hinge for the uh, uh, for the knee and he does have your your standard kind of uh, uh, pivot with the uh, with the hinge for the foot so uh, that works it's great articulation is pretty adequate on this guy and yes the arms are bendy but they're very solid very solid very sturdy again the articulation that's that's in uh, that the triangular um, hand parts the one that's open there's no articulation same with the with the bottom ones no articulation so um yeah that's how he's supposed to look all around but like i said when you stand him up you could use the ones that are the arms that are on the bottom uh, for the top part so if you want to like grab a spider-man figure or whatever you could do that um, but uh, good options i think that they should have had a better uh peg system for the those kind of hands to go into the arms because depending how you pose it it could fall off it needed something that kind of clicked in a little bit better and because it just kind of you know it's just the male female joint essentially and just slides off there's nothing that really clicks it and holds it so that's that's the only other i guess major or not major or a minor kind of critique but uh overall he looks great so alfred molina's likeness is there uh, cool looking figure all around. And like I said, he could hold himself up, you know, um, not, a, not any Doc Ock figures in the past could have done shit like this. So, uh, that's impressive. So overall, uh, I'll give him credit for that. Uh, the sculpt itself is, is very nice. The only thing he's really lacking in would be that the extra paint, you know, cause like if you're going to go, uh, you know, the Marvel cinematic universe approach, uh, with some of these more realistic kind of way that they're doing them. That's the only thing that's lacking. But, you know, and Alfred Molina, fantastic actor. I, I love him in Spider-Man 2. He did a great job in this movie, uh, reprising his role as Doc Ock. Uh, to me, he, he was one of the standouts in that whole film. Now, here I got to ask you, since it, it's obviously a lack of extra detailing with the paint, do you suppose that's why the glasses look really off to you? No, I think it's just, it's literally, it's just, it's too narrow. Um, the way the way that they have it, because I, I guess they wanted it closer to the face, so it, it like it glues in better and it doesn't fall off. Because you know, kids playing with these figures, there's a good chance it's going to come off or whatever. But uh, if it's more narrow and tighter to the face, there's a less chance of that happening. But you could see his eye, like his eyes are sculpted as well. If you flash the light in it, you could see his pupils and everything. Like like they really they put a lot of work into it. It just sucks that they kind of you know they did that silly mistake but um like i said overall though uh i gave this guy a pretty high score because it does look awesome and trust me once these guys are gone good luck finding them again i know i've seen quite a few in my local target and you know i i i hear what you're saying with the bendy wire and considering that this is like more like budget oriented for collectors 
This yeah. isn't like high end. So using the bendy wire and something like that is, mm -hmm. is absolutely understandable. But I mean, if yeah. you were looking for a high quality figure, you mm -hmm. never want to see these bendy wires and high quality stuff. Oh, I agree. Yeah. But as soon as you get any mm -hmm. kind of humidity or anything gets in there to actually degradate the uh, metal that's in there, it's yeah. over for that shit. I got to say, though, whatever the plastic they used on here, this does not feel like it's going to be breaking anytime soon. Like, it, like I'm telling you, it's very solid. I, I was very surprised with how sturdy this is. Um, and obviously back here, this guy, yeah, you can't find him anywhere. I, I had to order him for Big Bad Toy Store before he, got, he sold out. Because, um, yeah, everywhere else, you cannot find him. I did searches all over the place. Yeah. He's, he's he's not even in the state. <laughs> yeah, it, it's ridiculous, but I'll be reviewing him soon as well. Uh, uh, Time Prof is pretty impressed with this one. Uh, he gives it uh, five swans. Yeah, this 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 is a good one. Uh, we, um, in case anybody's not paying attention to what's going on in the chat with this, uh, apparently we are trying to uh, trade animals and livestock for figures now. Uh, it's a new thing that we're doing over here on Collectible Pass. We're working on it. We don't have the exchange rate quite down yet, so we'll get back to you on that. Yeah, but he, I did give him an 8.5 out of 10. Um, like I said, there is a lot here that they, they did a fantastic job on. I mean, even the texturing on, on, his, on his shirt as well for the black turtleneck. Um, very nicely done. The sculpt work is there. The arms, all the detail that's 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 in those, yeah, out of this world. So, um, yeah, uh, I'd say if they fixed the glasses, he would have been a solid nine. Had he had the paint as well, and maybe double hinged uh, elbows instead of the single, this guy could have easily been a ten, easily. So, um, yeah, overall, uh, excellent stuff here. And yeah, I'm looking forward to reviewing that guy because I just kind of opened him up to to put him over here just to show you guys like a side by side of you know two of the uh, the better villains uh, in the Spider-Man universe. Don't forget, guys, I still have an art book that uh, that goes out the door right away. So if you want to back something awesome, 64 pages, jump on it. Um, but yeah, uh, this guy, excellent figure. The arms make it for sure. Um, yeah, killer stuff right here. And it's kind of crazy they didn't go for the double jointed elbows because I actually have a few figures that do have double jointed elbows as well as having that their turn in the elbow. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, having the turn up at the top of the bicep toe. They yeah. absolutely could have put it in there. They just, yeah, they, they're, they're skimping. They're skimping out. They are. But this drives me crazy because this is the same thing that, that they did with the Indiana Jones figure. And I think they do it with the Star Wars figures a lot too. Just one big stupid disc in the arm. It looks so fucking ugly. I'm sorry. It really does. Yeah, it's functional, but it looks bad. So uh, work work your way around this. Come on. You can do better than that, uh, Hasbro. Just step it up. So, yeah, that was, that was my first one. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Awesome. Uh, Slasher, uh, did you have anything this week or no? Uh, sure. One sec. Mm -hmm. uh, We're exchanging monkeys now. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't. I, I mean, I understand. I, I knew we had pigs and dragons, chickens, goats, horses, cows, and ducks. I, I was unaware of this exchange. We're gonna have to rewrite the whole table on uh, exchange for these things now. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, dude, that lemmy looks great. That's fantastic. Fifty-five bucks. That price is not fantastic, <laughs> but the figure looks great. <laughs> this is Super 7, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How much did they have to pay Nick Weiser for this? <laughs> they should have had an alternate head for him. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Yeah, that looks really good. Nice. <laughs> like, Does he actually come with a cigarette? Oh man, does he come with a cigarette hand? Yes, he yeah, does. He does. Come with a cigarette hand. <laughs> That's awesome. And a middle finger. That is excellent. And a fucking bottle of Motorhead tequila. <laughs> Looks like the 
the Motorhead logo on it. Yeah, it is the Motorhead logo. Yeah. Yeah, I like Dude, that, that is beautiful. Look at that. It got the warts and everything. Yep. See, I like their style because it's like it's still cartoony, but it's still there's enough realism where you can definitely see who it is. Good shit. And that's that's like soft goods for the shirt. It looks like it, right? Yeah, it yeah. does. Nice. Dude, that's pretty badass. The uh, tattoos and everything. I wonder yeah. what other uh, music ones they got that they're going to do like that. That looks better than that Alice Cooper from the other day. Oh, yeah. Is it Alice oh, Cooper no. you were showing? Or was yeah, it Alice yeah, Melty, Al, uh, yeah, Alice Cooper and uh, Melty, uh, uh Ozzy. Uh, Soul Assassin, I, I will say this just from my experience, well, one figure, um, they can do better. Mm -hmm. and, and let me tell you, because I was collecting Super Seven technically before anybody really knew who they were, mm -hmm. so this is back when they were still only known as Reaction. Yeah, and they had made a bunch of Judge Dread figures way back in the day before they became famous for doing the little three and three quarter Star Wars type figures. This was before KB Toy Store had closed down. Those damn figures for Judge Dread 2000 AD were in KB Toy Store, and it was by reaction. And they were they were amazing figures. And then they scaled down. They went with three and three quarters, and they went a little bit cheaper. And then the last one I got is Lurch had sent me, which I, I guess Lurch ain't going to make it tonight. Um, Lurch had sent me a Cobra Commander from Super 7. Looked great. There were so many quality control issues in that damn thing. I thought I was looking at that freaking, well, I guess to, for better explanation, the Flash Gordon figures. There were so many quality control issues with the damn thing. Hands that didn't pour it in. Sounds just like them. Uh, mm -hmm. A weapon that had no handle. Absolutely retarded. A whole, all kinds of other problems with the joints mm -hmm. being loose and shit like that. Like, yep. absolutely horrendous. And I'm like looking at this thing and like, this thing is selling for over 40 some odd dollars, which is more mm -hmm. than a NECA figure right now. It's selling yep. for more. And you're telling me this is the best that they can give you? I could just, I would rather buy a classified figure from Hasbro and know that I'm going to get a good quality G.I. Joe figure than to buy another Super 7 G.I. Joe. Yeah. yeah. See, them doing Super 7 really made no sense to me when you have classifieds that it's such a strong series and they sell out all the time. I have uh, three of the Thundercats figures. Um, I have uh, when it was the other company. I think it was what did you say? Reaction. Uh, they they had a Panthro. Um, so I I had him. I found him on a discount in a GameStop for like twenty five bucks or something. That's why I got him. Like oh, he's, he was one of my favorite characters. And then years later, um, as they're Super Seven now, I got I think the two point Lionel. Fantastic figure. That thing was beautiful. No issues whatsoever. Well, that and, and, the, and that and the Mumra. Yeah, yeah Mumra the Ever Living with Mawmut. Holy crap, what a beautiful set. Everything about that was just, it was picture perfect. So, yeah, they could do that quality for sure. Uh, and I do like those better than, than most McFarlane figures, to be quite honest. Um, I don't know, McFarlane has like, it feels like most of the time, ugly robot joints and a really ugly aesthetic to their figures. Well, they've um, been getting really lazy. I mean, and they really mm -hmm. started to kick off with getting really lazy again with that Batman 66 line. Uh, absolutely yeah, yeah. just went so cheap with the articulation in those figures. And the early ones, they really did a stellar job on at least making it look like the actors and everything from the show. Yep. But as the line went further on, they started getting further and further away from what the actors looked like. And then the paint jobs on them did not match the show. Like they really just started like sinking in the toilet. And I think that was, uh, what was that? Like third wave of them. And that's when I kind of checked out. I was like, nope, I, I ain't buying any more of these things. They can miss me with that shit. Yeah. Like I said, I, I think I'm pretty much done with all the McFarlane shit. I got a couple of reviews that I still need to do. There's two figures from when I moved. I don't know where I put them. And I want to do a full review on those. But uh, at this point, I don't even think I want to give them a spotlight, to be quite honest. Um, I might, though. Cause I, I have the dark, I have one of those uh, Dark Knight uh, Christian Bales. Um, 
maybe it's like the unmasked one. It, I think it looks really good, like the face and everything, but I don't know when I'm going to get around to it, to be quite honest. Uh, so yeah. my trade my trade value for a McFarlane figure right now, as it stands, a uh, current market, as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. is one empty can of tuna. Yep, pretty much. You know, like I said, there are certain characters, if he does them, I would definitely jump on them as long as they look right. Jack Nicholson Joker, which I don't think he'll ever pay the money in order to make that. And there's a reason why not many companies tackled him. And I think I have the best one anyway. I have the one because of him deal. owning the fucking <laughs> well, okay, he, the deal, rights. Well, not he, well, well, yeah, the, the, the deal that Jack cut for the 1989 movie. He's got a major chunk of fucking money yeah. out of anything that has his likeness as a Joker. So, and Todd will not spend the money in order to make him. So this has to be either some kind of miracle or if he kicks the bucket. Um, I think it's the only way you will end up seeing a Jack Nicholson Joker from him. Uh, and Linda Carter as Wonder Woman. Like, why hasn't that happened yet? Like, Never? I, I, he hasn't done them. No, no, nobody? Could you Nobody's think of someone who did? I've seen statues, but I've never, I don't think I've ever seen a, an actual proper, yeah. you know, like six inch figure of, of her. Well, these companies, man, I don't know. They could be making a fortune, but they're afraid to do these things. They're afraid to go near it, or they don't want to pay, uh, you know, the proper money to these actors. It's so stupid. And then they, what do they do? They end up denying the fans all this stuff. It's very aggravating. Uh, I don't know. Should I should I go on my last piece now, or uh, know, I, I've got a few other things if you want okay. me to go first. But yeah, um, yeah. just just to finish it. up on that McFarland talk. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh God, I, I just had the thought and I just lost it. But it was something. Oh, the uh, Superpowers collection. So yeah. when McFarland re-released the Superpowers collection, they did not. He did not include any of the actions, and that's what that line was sold on the premise <laughs> yeah. of the actions. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that's like why I got so just like Silverhawks, like I was saying before. Yeah. Like well, like that. That was another one, Slasher, was when Motu started doing the Origins line. Initially, they were including a lot of the actions that the original figures had, and I thought that was great. Then all of a sudden, the they beast. started not including it. Like Mechanic, he didn't have an extending head anymore. He had a separate oh, head that you popped off and put the long sucks. neck on. I was like, no, uh, you, I ain't buying that shit. Ram Man, at least Ram Man had the, the, the legs that bounced up. Hordak, Buzzsaw, Hordak had the freaking Buzzsaws that shot out of his chest. All that, you know, uh, Battle Armor He-Man Skeletor had the freaking Battle Armor thing in the middle that it, it spun around a couple times and, you know, showed the damage. But when they got the Mecha Neck and uh, Rattler and there was a few other ones, yeah, they didn't have the action there. They included separate heads. I was like, nah, you can miss me with that shit. I ain't buying that. That's garbage. If mm -hmm. it's Origins, it needs to be just like the original one with those same type. I'm not saying make it exactly like the original one, but at least give us the same type of operating premise that the original one had if that's what you're going for. They mm -hmm. did that with the classic lines with the Turtles. Like everything the original Turtles did, that's what these re-releases have. And that's the way you are you should be doing it. If you add a little more articulation like they did with the Motu, there's nothing wrong with that. But at least include the original functions. They did it with Roboto with all the little gears and his chest moving. When, yeah. You know, it, there was no reason they couldn't, but they just got cheap. Mm -hmm. That sucks. I'm it sorry. Was... I, I went on a rant. Uh, no, uh, back, right. back to back to toys. Back to toys. Uh, well, but that's it, man. Like you said, that's that's a gimmick that was supposed to be in that line, and they denied the fans that. It's, uh, but yeah, this thing with superpowers was you squeeze the arms or the legs, and they do listen, an action. Uh, no tuna for Todd. <laughs> no tuna to Todd. None. Uh, you're right, Castle. It is greed, and it is a bit of a ripoff. And yes, Papa, yep. I do still have a few of my Micronauts. Unfortunately, the way my father had packed everything in the house, um, yeah, that's kind of the problem you have with hoarders. They just kind of jam things in boxes, and some of my Micronauts are not in great shape. Uh, I have a few micro men as well, which also are in not very good shape, but I do still have them along with a few other oddballs. Um, uh, I forget what it was called star galaxy force or something like that. Um, uh, did you, did you the, ever uh, have those little, um, the little, uh, what was it? Starcom, the little ones that with the magnets on their feet. I, I, um, I think I did. I had so many weird freaking oddball toys. It, it was just crazy. And like I, I have a hard time remembering all the different names off the top of my head. 
I guarantee by the time the stream ends and I sit around for a few hours, all the names will come to me. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what it was called. Because that's usually the way it works. <laughs> but um, a, a lot of good stuff. So um, right now I'm going to get into a toy break. And uh, since Papa was worried about having a dry stream earlier, uh, Papa, uh, go ahead and get your drink out, buddy. Welcome back for your toy break. As we we're getting ready to take a look at something that's a little bit older, these ones are from Transformers, a mixture of Micro Machines and Transformers. We have Micro Masters. Now this line started in 1989 and almost all these are 1989 with the exception of the two at the end that are actually 1990. Let's go ahead and get these ones transformed. <laughs> Here we go with our MicroMasters all transformed. Do you guys remember these from that Transformers line from 1989 to 1990? Oh, one quick addendum to this. Uh, over the years of collecting Transformer parts, I have wound up with a slew of some of these extra MicroMasters, uh, sometimes to the tune of six of the same MicroMaster. <laughs> Catch you next time, guys. I do remember those. I had them, man. I had a good number. I have one of those. It's not in very good shape. Uh, that's the thing. They were made so cheaply. It's yeah. not even in that. The, the color is different, too. The jet, uh, the color I have on that, well, it's it's still, the, it, the, the jet's different, but, like, the legs, I think the one I have is green. Well, they, they reuse some of those um, MicroMaster molds a few different times. Oh. Uh, Okay, so uh, I have yeah. a different series, so I got a different series. Yeah, it, it might, yeah, might because they had like yeah, you know, the highway patrol, the off road patrol, the this patrol, the that patrol. So they they reused a few of the molds. But um, there's an addendum addendum to uh, this video which I didn't film. So mm -hmm. as I was picking up all those little red vans, the six of them, and I was putting them away, I looked in the one bag and I found another one. So I have seven of them. <laughs> Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, shit. I, I don't know how this happens. Like, you know, I buy these parts lots for transformers so I can fix the old regular vehicles and then uh, wind up with a few MicroMasters here or there. And mm -hmm. next thing you know, I got seven of the same one. Uh, you know, I had friends like that back in the day. They, these two brothers I used to hang out with back in the day. Between the two of them, they had like fucking, for some reason, like six Splinter figures. And none of them had the fucking robe. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh shit! No, I um, people like that. Uh, Slasher. Um, we started next week. Uh, last week, I'm sorry, not next week. Uh, last week we started in uh, getting back to what you had asked about a while ago. Um, we're going to continue again this week. Uh, I'm going to play this real quick, and then uh, I can hand it back over to Vinny if you want, Vin. Mm -hmm. Um. Get slasher. This is for you. You asked for it, and here goes the next part in the uh, the toy biz parade. Welcome back, as we are hanging out with Indy. What's up, Indy? The archaeological pig digging into the past with some more old school goodness. So, from 1984 in the Super Powers Collection, we've got Batman. This one, I believe, had the leg squeezing action and his arms would punch, but yeah, doesn't appear to work anymore. 
what a shame. Uh, kind of is what it is. Sometimes these things just kind of wear out over time. But there you go with the 1984 Batman. Still got his cloak, which is actually pretty amazing. So then we move on to 1989 and the Batman movie figures. Uh, we got a couple here. We got the Batman right there with his action. And we also have a Joker. Uh, most of their accessories are missing, unfortunately, or they're just kind of lost in the shuffle. Man, this Joker doesn't stand very well at all. There we go, kind of got him up. Uh, this Batman actually had like the grappling belt action. So pull that out and then suck it right back up and pull him up a wall or whatever. If you can get him on a wall, I suppose. So there you go with Batman and the Joker. Now in 1992, they released another version of the Joker. This one had that big long pistol, kind of like you've seen in the movie. Um, very very weird like how bright the colors were on this one he, i don't know remember if he came with anything else but there that joker is so we're gonna put him right over here next to the 89 batman and also from 92 and most of these were from toy biz we've got two face with his big old coin right there uh this one had a wind-up action i wonder if it still works let's see uh, it still works after all this time. So there you go in 1992 and Two-Faced. And most of the articulation in these ones, they were pretty substandard, to be honest. Uh, they weren't great. So then in 1994, I believe it was, or, or these were 94 and those were 92, um, we've got the Penguin. He did come with an umbrella. And the umbrella did launch out of the bottom of the handle, but unfortunately it can't seem to find the handle. But there you go with the Penguin. Also that same year, they released this Robin. Another one, pretty standard articulation, arms just move. It's like giant freaking Star Wars figures, honestly, with the lack of articulation that they had in these things. Uh, this was 1993, and you get the animated series version of the Joker. Dude, yeah, I had all of them except for the first one. That I had all, had or still have almost all of them. I didn't have the, that Robin. I wish I had that Robin because I like, I don't give a fuck what I'm yeah, he I like Tim Drake Robin. Yeah, I like Tim Drake as well. Me too. Original Tim Drake, not yeah, Tim that Drake. miniseries Drake. and Brian Boland and those covers. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Yeah, that shit was awesome. And it was a cool story because he was going out on his own. Yeah. Oh, they did a good job. Um, uh, hey, uh, what's going on, uh, Parrothead? Uh, good to see you. And that, that Penguin, uh, how many goddamn times did these companies use that Penguin mold? Oh, yeah, man. Right? Uh, yeah, that's why I had no <laughs> articulation. Uh, what's yeah. going on, Lurch? Uh, speaking of Master Molds, Xavier yeah, flying Lurch. the jet packed with explosives in the Master Mold was great. I forgot about that shit. <laughs> what's going on, man? <laughs> Uh, Papa thinks that I should send you a candle, Vinny. Uh, if anybody remembers that, there was no. a lot of uh, horking. Why, why, would, and... why would he do that? <laughs> I could send one that smells like, I don't know, like a bologna. <laughs> <laughs> you got, if you're going to send a, a, a bologna uh, scent to candle, send it to Trina, not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he said, I had the boatmobile and Joker's van and the Batwing from the first Batman movie. Cool. Nice. Time profit. Yeah, that, yeah, what right. a and, uh, the I'm Toy Biz made the Joker van, right? Remember, jo Toy Biz made mm -hmm. the Joker van. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was fucking awesome. Cool. I didn't yeah, know that, anyone who had that. Though. That that more uh, that cool bright color Joker uh, with the long gun. That one, mm -hmm. he had the gimmick with the face. Where well, he out. also had the uh, helicopter on the back. He had the propeller uh, uh, backpack. I have him. Oh yeah, yeah. The only thing I'm missing from the, that figure is the gun. Oh, wow. I lost uh, that yeah. shit way long ago. A pair ahead. Uh, we were talking about that earlier. Um, there's two companies. Well, actually, it's one company. Uh, they, they've got two different brands out. So you got Super 7 and you got Reaction there, one in the same company. So they have three and three quarter inch snake eyes in blue. And then they also do the cartoon version, or should I say the early cartoon version of Snake Eyes where he was in blue. Yeah. Uh, that That's all Super 7 Reaction. Pretty neat. 
but uh, yeah, um, I have that. Um, I have one other thing. If you want me to go again, it all depends on how much you have, Benny. Oh yeah, oh you could if you want. Uh, the one I'm gonna do it's it's it's, it's a longer review than the octopus one. Okay, well, I, I've got one other thing I can hit here. Um, it, it, it doesn't technically lead into my next topic. There's a trivia question for that, but um, I do have a toy on that I could show off. Cool. All right, uh, here we go, everybody. Uh, the, the toy hunt, for those that are uninitiated, this is when I go out to the toy stores and I see what they legitimately have on the shelves at the time. And sometimes we find some stuff that surprises us. Uh, Vinny usually gets surprised by the shit that I wind up finding on the shelves and uh, what's going on adam hey adam hey what up? what's up how you doing brother well i mean i'm sitting here listening and watching and i'm just seeing all this batman stuff and i'm like you know I, I might as well i might as well jump on for a minute i mean i might have a i might have a few you know a few a few things oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll you yeah, so it's full, there we go you know i mean we do have we do have a little bit of love for uh for quite a few things, for uh, sure, man. definitely, definitely that have to do with the bat. You know, you haven't been able to find the bat wing yet, right? I um, do not have the bat wing, my friend. No, uh, I mean I have the Lego one that I haven't put together. That's like yeah. there. No, I meant, <laughs> I meant in the the, the Hot Wheels. Uh, no, sir, I do not. I do not. I'll, I have I'll, I'll keep s- I'll keep an eye out again, man. Um, yeah, I, I, I I have the old school ones. Yeah. Oh yeah, but then we've got we've got the good Batman stuff over here. So we have to get to the good stuff. The good stuff's over here. It's always over here. I mean, he's staring at us with his blue. Look at that. He's just gleaming. He's just so happy to be on screen. But I mean, if you're gonna go Batman, we gotta always swing it over here to the Vinny right, corner. <laughs> always showing the love but, there. But yeah, I mean, we've got we've got we've got a few things Batman and a few things Joker with the red and the white and the holy shit that reflects really horribly. Um, <laughs> you, you might you might be getting it tomorrow i think the joker that uh yeah the uh it so it's the retardation of the usps you know it's yep. in indianapolis it's three hours away but it'll probably end up going to chicago or fort wayne before it gets to me or yeah, no, because why why not let's be Jesus. let's be silly come on you piece of crap there we go but yeah um yeah, your joker collection is sick there's, there's, there's a few items. It'd be nice if I could get the uh, remotes to work, but you know, I'm on the phone. Where, ah, there we go. A little bit lower light. But yeah, we've got we've got a few couple items that are that aren't too bad. <laughs> just a just a just a few. <laughs> Very maybe cool. a whole room full. You know, I mean, we do have the entire clown. Does it doesn't get much bigger than him? Yeah. <laughs> now, now, if we could only just teach uh, Adam about lighting. <laughs> well, it is kind of it's, dark, giggity. What do you want from the cave? You know, right? It's the bad cave. That's right. Well, I mean, you know, I get the reflection from the uh, the, the TV too. But yeah, yeah, you know, it's always fun down here. But yeah, as soon as I see you know the bat symbols going off, I'm like, oh, I've got to jump on. Tommy's showing uh, off some of his cool stuff. I got to show some of mine. Uh, Adam, I, I got to ask you, when you, you say you have a lot of fun down there, are we talking about like normal fun or are we talking about black light is going to expose a lot of things that we don't want to see on the internet fun? No, there's black lights here and you can walk through fine. I mean, you might you might not like what the dog mess left, but that's about it when it comes to that. <laughs> I'm too old for that kind of shit. I'm not brutal. <laughs> Uh, I see the guys are uh, talking about Oppenheimer was in six million dollar man and bionic woman. Huh, interesting. And also in Flash Gordon cartoon. That's pretty interesting. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> played it. Played a few characters in Motu. Wow. Holy shit. Holy shit. Um. All right. Um. I'm go- I'm getting ready to jump into the uh, toy hunt. Uh, we already uh, kind of broke down uh, how that works. So here yeah. we go with your toy hunt for this stream. Checking out some of the Nekatuni Terrors. Elvira, 40 years. We got Tar Man, Jigsaw, Ghost Base, Ash, Fit the Crowley. Like just tons of these Toonie Terrors all over the place. 
And of course you got some of the regular neck figures, gargoyles, a whole bunch of gargoyles, the aliens, the thing, creep show, Friday the 13th, all kinds of good stuff in there. And these things were almost all sold out. Last time I was here, these things were stocked. Almost all gone. And they only got one of them, the star ones left. Selling out. These shits right here, no move. And they got some more turtles. Gray Skull, Leonardo, Man of Arms, Man, and of course, Mouse Jaw. They always have Mouse Jaw. So as usual, the bulk of the Transformer stuff is not being restocked. I mean, they do have a few things here. They got the uh, Gamer Edition store screen, which I have the original one. I think the original one looks absolutely fine. I really don't need another version. And 86 blaster, just a slight repaint on the blaster mode that was already out. Silver bolt, these doors, boulder dash, a boulder crash. And a Megatron. Looks more like Galvatron. Cheetor. That's about it. Yeah, man, it's uh, I've seen those Transformers as well. I don't have that star screen. I was tempted. I'm like, eh, do I need well, it? I, I, I still have the original one, and yep. I, that one doesn't really look much better than the original one. So I'm like, eh, do I really need it? I, I don't think I do. Yeah. Most of the stuff we don't need. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, there's, there, there's always certain figures you look at and like, oh, I got to have that. Um, oh, in yeah, case yeah. you noticed in that, in that short right there that I had made. When that Leonardo popped up, he came right off the peg. Yeah, that's the that's yeah, uh, that went home with you. Grabbed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man. I, I'm telling you, I told, told you before when we started. There was something. I'm like, yeah, I have to get these because I know I'm, I'll never see him again. <laughs> Dude, wait, you know? wait, do you see that later? Um, I have that review for the Leonardo uh, later on. Uh, holy shit, dude! I, I was, I'm, th I was thoroughly impressed with that one. Uh, that was definitely my standout piece for the week for the show like absolutely incredible oh that's yeah I, I know time profit yeah um we see everything here you can't get away with it we're gonna see it all <laughs> oh, but um yeah uh vinny uh all on you my man yeah yeah well i'll, I'll continue because uh, you guys saw uh, part of this on the x-men review so i said yeah let me uh let me do this well it's a twofer um it's the 50th anniversary Sabretooth and Wolverine. So I'm like, yeah, let's uh, let's break this one down. And uh, that Sabretooth, I got to say, man, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, packaging's pretty cool on this. Um, I, I think they did a pretty nice job. We have, I, th I think it's Andy Kubert or Adam Kubert. I got him confused. Uh, but this thing, oh, Adam. But this drives me crazy that they didn't have the actual Wolverine number 10 blown up there. Uh, and they have like the wrong name on the image. Like, uh, I don't understand that these people are retarded, but um, again, uh, you're going to hear more of that later in the review regarding the Logan figure. But uh, it's good to see a Logan in street clothes, but Holy crap. Does that figure come? It falls short. Um, I'll say that much. Sabretooth, again, I love that design. That's like the Jim Lee design, and I think they did a killer job. Uh, I'll jump a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, like the faces alone, beautifully done, nicely sculpted. This made absolutely zero sense. Two heads, both of them with cowboy hats. Uh, someone explain that to me. Why wasn't uh, one a regular uh, Wolverine head with no hat? Because clearly on the back of the box, his hat is in the air. So why not have him, you know, with a proper yelling face? Like, these people are so stupid. I don't understand who makes these decisions at these uh, at these companies. But, um, yeah, out of the packaging, that's how they scale. Obviously, in the box, they wanted Wolverine to look like the same height. I don't know why. It was kind of silly. But, yeah, when you take them out, that's how they stand. So, uh, and yeah, Sabretooth, he's a bigger character for sure. Um, 
beautifully done. The sculpt work on him mm -hmm. is, is really nice. The paint job is pretty clean. I think the only thing that's reuse is his, the bottom legs. Uh, I believe his whole upper torso is brand new. Uh, the fur does not come off. That is, it's glued and pinned and all that. So um, if you think you could take it off, because I know they've re released older figures and you were able to kind of remove it, but um, no, this is this is pinned and glued, uh, which that's what it should be. It's part of his costume. So uh, he, he does look amazing. I'm very, very happy I got my hands on this thing. Uh, yeah, because... Day one when they came out, there's just one in the store in GameStop, and that's it. Never saw them again. The stores aren't carrying them anymore. I, I don't know how they make these decisions on when they release these things, but it's mind-boggling for sure. Um, overall, he looks nice, but uh, I don't know if you guys caught wind of it, especially on his upper torso. They didn't give him any butterfly joints. And his shoulders, the width, it's, that's a wide figure in comparison to a lot of other figures. So you have plenty of space to do it. They didn't do it. Um, head movements, okay for what it is. Ball joint um, with like that hinge thing. So he, could, he has an okay range. Shoulders go all the way around. It's a ball joint. Um, upper bicep, double hinge for the elbow. That's pinless at least. Uh, wrist, you know, adequate. It is what it is. Although I think at this point they could just put a ball joint and that's fine. Um, the hula hoop action. I thought it'd be more range, but for what it is, I guess it's okay. Side to side, all right. Splits, not so great. Upper thigh, double hinge for the knee. Uh, an okay amount, I guess. Uh, he's got his rocker with the hinge, so that's fine. But the arms really pissed me off that there were no butterfly joints. This guy... He actually has them, and wow, um, they did a nice job hiding it with the fur. Um, but yeah, really, really cool. Sculpt work, like I said, beautiful job on this. Paint job's extra clean. And again, you don't need him to have any wash or anything like that, because again, this is how he looked in the, in the comics and the cartoon. So no gripes, no problem there. Uh, head articulation, chin could touch the chest. Uh, you look up an okay amount, side to side adequate um again that whole piece like i said it's not coming off so uh he does have beautiful butterfly joints and that's what you want with that kind of character um because this whole thing is about you know the claws and you know gutting people with his hands his bare hands so uh great articulation ball joint uh upper bicep cut pinless for the elbows on the double joint pretty good range for a figure that's that massive in size um, he has his hinge, uh, with the regular rotation. He does have the T joint. I prefer the other joint, but, um, it's okay for what it is. Uh, you know, forward and back at a decent amount, waist turn, uh, legs an okay amount. He's not really a guy known for doing giant splits, uh, upper thigh, double hinge. And again, for, he's got like basketball sized calves. That's a good amount of articulation and movement. Um, He's got yeah your your standard kind of rocker uh, with the pin. Beautiful articulation on that guy. Uh, he comes with alternate hands again, and they're all like claw type hands or you know um, very nicely done, beautifully sculpted. Uh, so yeah, one's kind of slightly more of a pointing kind of hand, but uh, good stuff there. Alternate head with the closed uh, mouth that looks really good. I, I was really happy with that. Uh, I kind of question why they didn't make that hand a little bit more open. Like, because there was quite a few times in the comics where he grabbed Logan by the neck. Oh, yeah. Well, he's got uh, the right and the left. Um, the right hand is, is really wide. So you, you could you could uh, grab the other character pretty you know, in a pretty good way there. Um, yeah, the, uh, the alternate head on this. I still don't understand. Why did they give him two heads with the hat? That's what I've been questioning. And during the review, I questioned that. You do one that has a regular head with, like, uh, you know, gritting teeth or an, a yelling open mouth, especially that he's facing off against Sabretooth, his biggest That's enemy. Stupid. Yeah, these guys are re retarded. I'm pretty sure these cards are, again, you can see Xavier on it, so I guess it's the school playing cards. 
I'm pretty sure that was for Gambit. And they decided, let's throw it with Wolverine. And he has alternate hands for that. It makes no sense to me. Was he playing poker before he got in a fight? I mean, that's my only question. I, I, you know I, what I, I mean? If like, it's a specific comic book. Well, maybe. you know what? If they're going to do the alternate head with the hat, why not have it with the cigar? Oh, they will not put a cigar. Yeah, I know. I at know. Or make it where the hat comes off, right? Yeah. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna give them two hats, make mm-hmm. it where one comes off and yeah, his well, teeth are sticking out or something. Well, yeah, that, that's the point I was making too during this because you have all right, you have like a neutral kind of face, a little bit of a smirk. Okay, um, and they sit differently too. This head sits a little bit higher than the one with the brown hat, and the only difference is like it's like the bill is it's it's more scrunched. So it's more narrow. Okay, what the hell's the point of that? It's almost the same expression, almost the same hat. Given the other word, again, like he's yelling, he's gonna face off against Sabretooth. It's on the packaging itself, the artwork that they use, Adam Kubert's drawing. He's yeah, like, roaring like and Lurch, yelling and jumping in the air. Lurch brought up the cards. These are Gambit's cards. <laughs> yeah, that's how I was pretty sure it was. Um, no, nah, but really though, like they they included a deck of cards instead of <laughs> I was thinking oh. from that horrible movie when he meets Gambit. I think they were playing cards. I could see oh origins. Cards, yeah, know? but th- this is this was specifically based off the comics. Um because it's the fiftieth anniversary for the Yeah, comics. they never ever gave Sabretooth his costume in the in the movies. No, they never did. And the thing with that right hand, that was not meant for the cards. That was meant to hold a beer bottle because it hinges up and down like that as well. And they no, we're not gonna put beer. Beer means you're gonna kids are gonna want to drink. Wolverine can't drink or smoke. He's a he's a cool character. He's a PG character. No, he's not. He's got yeah, his murderous him. weapons are attached to his fucking body. Really put the knife PG down. Character. I can't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He slaughters characters, but we can't have him smoking or drinking or I'm pleading. What a I think you people. nailed it, Vinny. It was supposed to be for a cigar and a mm-hmm. beer, and then yep. the PC police came in and they would have sold even more had they done it right. Yep, I'm just Those saying. Pussies. And again, what would it it wouldn't have taken much to give him the butterfly joint in the shoulder as well. It would have been great. Nope. So he's more he's more of like a, an older kind of toy biz esque. Uh, articulation up there it's like come on 50th anniversary and you shortchange your main character dickheads well uh, i you know the the guys in the chat are seeing this as well uh you know time profit uh on the exchange he said uh, i would have given 10 goats but the uh, plastic claws instead <laughs> adam <laughs> uh, Lurch says a 10 out of 10 for uh, Sabretooth, but a 9.5 out of 10 for Logan. Uh, Chaos Hoy says he would give 20 goats for it. Um, <laughs> interesting exchange, exchange rates on this. Uh, Soul Assassin also says he pisses them off that he didn't jump on the 12-inch Wolverine figure when he had a chance. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, had, I don't remember if I reviewed him. Uh, I had the Hasbro one from a couple years ago. Um, if I can find where it is, I'll, I'll do a proper review. But that was a pretty nice one. Uh, I, and I got them uh, on a discount on their eBay store. Hasbro had them. Um, I think they knocked off like 10 or 15 bucks, something like that. Because um, it's a failed line, actually, too. That I couldn't believe. That 12-inch line that they were doing. Because they didn't know exactly where they were going with it. Because they weren't exactly going to do Hot Toys. Uh, but yet, they needed a certain price point in order to sell them in the stores. So they kind of, they, they, they short change some stuff here and there. It's crazy. But for the most part, I, I have um, a, a decent number of them. I have the Wolverine, uh, the Deadpool kind of shitty. It was just a remold of like a Spider-Man body, uh, regular Spider-Man, black suit, Spider-Man and um, black Panther. The black Panther is beautiful. That thing is amazing. So um, uh, that's impossible, Vinny. Uh, they said that you're too racist to own that that toy. There's no way that that happened. Um. Well, uh, if other YouTubers could say it, I could say it. I'm part black. You're gonna go and colonize the toy aisle, Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> but let, let, let me get it back into this for a second. This is actually the uh, X Men '97 Wolverine had the unmasked one. So, um, the only thing that's different is his skin color is a. 
it's slightly more yellow than the skin tone on on that Logan, but it's enough where you could fudge it. Um, it's all right. You can't really tell with the bright light on it anyway. But I think that looks great. So what the hell would it have taken just to do that? These 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 people are, are clowns. They really are. But yeah. So if you wanted to make to swap the head for some stupid reason, you could. Again, you could see how much <laughs> higher. Yeah, you can see how much higher it sits. That it's too that many accessory Wolverine. That's what that. Is. Yeah, <laughs> they should have added more, especially for his. <laughs> you should have put the card in his hand. The card in his hand. Well, we can't because there was no open hands. Oh, this. there's no open hands on the claw. Yeah, yeah, again, which was in my review as well. But again, look how great that looks. Just putting the nine, the ninety seven head on him. You know. Now, could you imagine if they had it like open mouth yelling? Yeah, know, like perfect off. or a pose like that. Yeah, dude, it would have been great. And you could yeah. recreate the uh, with what's on the. the they back did it with saber tooth. That saber tooth figure has the look on his face. Yep. No, the only thing I would say uh, they really downgraded uh, saber tooth on uh, the yelling face. They should have had a plug in drool, a clear plastic drool for him because he's always drooling <laughs> in the comics. Yeah, or some blood. I know he's yeah he was he was very violent in a couple of those stories. He's kill characters. Um, or they even imply that he ate someone once. So I yeah it's it's crazy stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I want to show you how they all look together. The Hugh Jackman movie version, who's obviously taller since he's six three in real life, um, and your you know your animated movie and then the uh, comic book Logan. So. Uh, all in all, like they do look great together, and this Wolverine, I think it's one of my favorite. The face on that is fantastic. The body, yeah. Is great. Like I said, yeah. I mean, you know my hatred for Disney. Um, and yep. speaking of that real quick, uh, how you doing, uh, Tina? Hey, <laughs> Bad take Bojan in the house. Uh, it's good yeah. to see you. Uh, but my hatred for Disney, and I just, I, I, I couldn't bring myself to buy it. But when I seen that Wolverine figure in the store, I was like. The, well, it wasn't just Wolverine. It was Wolverine. It was Magneto. It was freaking Gambit. Yeah. It was Rogue. They, yeah, they the all looked look. so amazing. They really did. I mean, look at the two of them together. Dude, this, yeah, this is sick. That's why I'm so happy I was able to get my hands on this on this Sabretooth figure. Because I know, again, I, I would never find that thing again. This isn't in regular stores. Uh, there was just uh, the GameStop. And I found it, like, on a fluke, I was looking for something else, and it popped up in their search. I'm like, what the hell? And the date was there. So I just, like, you know, I pretty much saved the date. I'm like, yeah, uh, does this figure out yet? And um, it came in the, th that day, and I got my hands on it. They held uh, it for me. Well, once again, though, you would think that this would almost be a wake-up call for, for the companies that are doing this shit. When they see they put this kind of stuff out that's actually harkening back to the older stuff, and they give yeah. you good quality look at figures that remind people not only of the old cartoons, but of the comics and everything, and they sell the hell out. you think that there would be like, ding, 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 a hey, uh, gutter, uh, tell, uh, tell us what we just want. Uh, mm -hmm. You'd think that they would catch on to that shit, but they just don't. Yeah, I, they're retarded. Listen, I don't, part, of, part of collecting is also the hunt. I mean, I, I know like chaos, you're saying, yeah, uh, eBay or Amazon. Here's the thing. eBay or Amazon, they charge an arm and a leg. You're not going to find them at retail. You will not. Um, I, I know this set is already going for over $100 on eBay. Good luck trying to find it at retail on, on those websites. You know? That's the problem is fucking Amazon. Yeah. And, and then the price gougers too. There are people, they'll go in every store they could find them in, and then they'll, they'll go straight onto eBay and it's like, okay, 100, 150, 200 bucks. Oh, my God, it's so hot. And they keep jacking the prices up. Mm -hmm. you know? Oh, well, you know, go, going back to that one again, because that is just a salty wound for me, was the um, the Cosmos figure uh -huh. from the Speedy of 500 line. Uh, $24 in the store. But every scalper had bought them all out on pre-order, so there was none in the stores. And yeah. they were charging $80 minimum for that $24 figure if you wanted to get it. Yeah. That's yeah, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. But um, Mike, my and, hairy Irish arse assholes. I'm telling you, man, I, I would like to just I, I would just like to meet every last one of these scalpers that do that shit just one time in person. I, I don't need a lot of time. I, I will run right down the line and I will kick every last one of you in your tiny little nuts. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it'll be 80 to 100 plus online. Yep, that's a hundred percent true.
Um, yeah, here's my kind of like little brotherhood of evil kind of setup so far. Hell yeah. You know, I think they look awesome. Excellent stuff there. You know, and, and again, pretty pretty big figures, pretty big characters, you know. You need so. to get that blob figure with the fat uh, cellulite knees. That thing did look good. <laughs> But yeah, and the and the movie uh, Deadpool, I I love that thing. Uh, that thing was so damn cool. He was a two pack release a couple of years back, but they're re releasing him. So if anyone is looking for him, him and the Wolverine, the, the Hugh Jackman one, they're both being released. Um, I think pretty soon. Uh, nice. yes, I gave him a nine out of ten. I have my own personal gripes where I think they could have done better for a perfect score of a ten out of ten. But for what it is, he is a must-buy. This set is excellent. Um, I do like that we have a kind of street clothes Wolverine. Uh, but, uh, uh, again, the, um, they fell a little short. That, that thing could have been great. Again, uh, Once again, it's that finer detail shit. Uh, it's the same yeah. thing that I've seen with this freaking yeah. the NECA uh, Flash Gordon and Ming the Merciless. Mm -hmm. Finer details is what's going to make or break these lines every single Absolutely. time. And yet he, I gave him a 7 out of 10. That's the highest I could go on this guy. Um, they do look great together. You could get them in some pretty good poses, but the lack of articulation with the butterfly joints, the lack of the alternate head, lack of the different hands, because, again, the ones that he came with I thought were stupid. The accessory was stupid uh, with the cards. And, yeah, why two cowboy hat versions? I, I, yeah. Oh, that bothers th me. Yeah, this set could have been really epic, but – for what it is, I, I still say it is a must-buy, especially if you are able to find it in stores for retail. Um, yeah, because, again, price gouging, it's, it's already doubled to triple the price. So, it's absolutely um, sickening when they do it. Uh, Soul um, Sassen, I know we've talked about that a few times in the past, mm -hmm. uh, opinion on third-party figures. Uh, don't 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 get it twisted. A lot of the third-party figures are absolutely fantastic, but a yeah. lot of them are so high-priced. That budget wise, it falls out of a lot of our purview. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, man. Like, look how great this is just, just by playing with the lighting, the shadows and stuff on his face. Like, the sculpt work is there. He is a beautiful figure. Um, yeah, man. I, I was very, very happy with that one. So, all in all, good for you. Good for you. <laughs> like, it looks like he's up to some evil shit. Uh, so oh, yeah. asking, uh, you might be right. Uh, ten goats might be too much. We are in a recession, you mad lad. Four <laughs> goats and two chickens is better. <laughs> Five goats, two chickens. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've been through this before. The insurance companies won't cover violence of piggies anymore. I know, I know. I, I'm... I'm in a lot of trouble with a lot of people, a lot of hot water. Uh, but I don't even care. I don't, what are they going to do to me that the uh, government already hasn't tried to do? <laughs> right? Yeah. This is crazy. Can you take more of what we don't have. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, uh, I, anybody uh, have anything else before I get into uh, trivia? Uh, no. Go ahead. All right. Go for All right. it. Last call, y'all. All right, here we go. Uh, this is your collectible pass trivia, and it's going to lead into my next topic, and I am so looking forward to this one. Absolutely, I enjoyed this next topic review, but here we go with the trivia. How many of you can get this one? Yeah, uh, you, that was an easy one. You left out Star Trek because that's the first thing I thought of. <laughs> well, I, I just, like I said, just to name a few. I, I know, I, mean, I know. So many, so yeah. many I didn't know they did Batman ones. Oh, yeah, they even mm -hmm. had a cartoon. They did a, they did a comic. 
for what it is. You mean well. of them together or? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I thought Any it was catches, Did you have Stranger Things in there as well? No. I, like I said, I just, just to name a few, I just yeah. named a few. Oh, dude. Yeah. I know. They cross over with everything. A bur biker mice from Mars as well. Mm -hmm. Very nice. But um, of course, you know what that means. Uh, we we were getting into uh, turtles here, and this is this one, man. Oh, I'm dude. just gonna play it. I was so happy with this one. Here we go. Welcome back, as we're hanging out with Rorschach, the superhero pig. Rorschach is here with us as we're getting ready to take a look at something that is superhero related. This one coming by way of Mattel. We've got Masters of the Universe, X Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, we got Turtles of Grayskull, and we have Leonardo! This is another one that I've been seeing in my store sporadically. Usually these things sell out really, really quick. So I, I got lucky, I found this one, I did see the Man at Arms one, I have seen Donatello, and I have seen the He-Man one. The He-Man one I do see pretty much regularly, but this one, not so much. Of course, you can see, like they do with most of their Motu, they got some nice artwork sitting on the back of this one. Pretty damn cool. And like their Motu lines, like the Origins that they're redoing from the classic design, they've got drawings of the other figures that are in this wave. They also include a comic book with this one, so let's go ahead, get this one out of the box, and take a look at it. So with Rorschach looking on approvingly, we'll go ahead and take a quick look at the mini comic. And there you go, by the power of pizza. Uh, pretty cool. Um, I'm going to say the uh, the artwork in this one, it's all right. It's not the greatest in the world. It is it is what it is. It's not bad. It's a nice little story to lead you into how everything happens with this Masters of the Universe line. And on the back page, there you go, showing off the figures that are in this wave. Leonardo, his swordsmanship is unmatched. Here we go with our Masters of the Universe TMNT crossover, Leonardo, right out of the box. Uh, I, I like the way this one looks. I think this one is absolutely hysterical. And after getting the mouse straw, I was pretty impressed with that one. So when I picked up this one, I wasn't sure how I was going to react. After taking a look at this thing, I got to say, I think this is absolutely hilarious. If guys are absolutely sitting on the fence wondering whether or not you should pick up these figures uh so far i would say that these are a big yes but let's get through the rest of this figure review the articulation and what he comes with so you can make a good informed decision after these messages we'll be right back yeah well that didn't feel like it was almost three minutes uh that really went by quick oh man that's what she said <laughs> you got a problem, Adam. You got a problem. Nah, never. He, he was cool looking, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait, well, do I get into the second part of this? So mm -hmm. I'm just going to jump right in. Uh, like I like I said, just the look of him alone. I love that face sculpt that they did for this Leonardo. It, it looks like a really good cross in between the comics and the cartoons and everything. It's like, I, I don't know what it is about it, but I think it is just perfect. But here we go. Let's get into the second half. And then, uh, guys, I'm going to get your reactions after you see the rest of what he comes with. Okay. Hell yeah. Now, back to our program. Here we go with Leonardo in a nice ready-to-fight stance. Uh, you can see all the movement that he has in there. Of course, the joints at the elbows, the movement up at the arms. got a waist turn. He's got a nice ball on his head, so you can kind of cock his head a little bit as well. Uh, they got the joints in the knees, movement up in the legs on a nice ball right there. And, of course, he does have pivot, and he does have rock down in his feet. Leonardo does come with an extra piece of armor. You do have to pop the hand off to put that forearm piece of armor on there. And then you got him reaching back, going for his sword. And, of course, it's Leonardo, so he's got twin swords at his disposal. Of course, even though it's TMNT crossover with Motu, of course, they got some of the Motu elements in there, like taking his two sword halves and combining them into a power katana. Uh, that, that's what they tried to call it. Uh, as we all know, 
this sword that he has right there, uh, while pretty cool, uh, that shit is not a katana. I'm sorry, not even by any stretch of the imagination. Also comes with this turtle shell shield. Now I know what you might be thinking of all, oh, that's kind of stupid. How's the turtle going to remove the shell? Uh, not to worry. It's the same problem that I had when I first seen it and I thought about it. I was like, wow, that's really dumb. There is another shell underneath. So this is supposed to be his actual shell. And then there's this harness piece on there. And then the shell is an extra attachment that goes over top of his back. So it is not really his turtle shell, but another piece of armor. A uh, few complaints about the way they box this thing and the way that they zip tie down or the little plastic uh, tie downs that they use for the swords that actually did warp the swords a little bit in the packaging. Mattel, you need to stop doing that shit. Uh, the look of Leonardo, I love the way that the face turned out on this one. I think that looks absolutely spectacular. I love the fact that the ends of his mask can go around and port on different sides. I love the way all the armor looks, the crossover look with the Motu line, with the big L in the center of his chest. I think everything about this is absolutely spectacular. Uh, the best I can give this one is a nine out of 10. This one absolutely gets high praise me. I love this look of this line. Anyway guys, that is all we have on this one. Turtles of Grayskull, Leonardo Heroic Ninja Turtle Leader. Turtle power. There it is. Somebody has to always complete it or poor Papa is going to lose his mind in the chat. Uh, yeah, and that was one of the things I was like, I, I'd seen like the early designs for this and they talk about, oh, well, the shells come off and they can use them as a shield on stuff, but that's retarded. They can't take off their freaking shells. Uh, and it's all explained in the mini comic and I didn't really get into it because, you know, it's lack a of time. He man and Turtles crossover. Really, do we need so many questions? Well, they, <laughs> they actually explain it in the first mini comic that it comes with. So Duncan and Donatello get together and... They start meshing ideas, and then they come up with the idea of the turtle shell, you know, like a something designed by Duncan, that like a turtle shell that could actually be a nice big shield that they could just put on their back. So Man at Arms also has a shield, a turtle shield, when you get that figure. And I think he's called, um, uh, God, what was Man at Arms called? Uh, Arms Master. Well, he's Arms Master with a half shell. Uh, now nah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny, <laughs> but they, they, yeah, they explain it all really well in the mini comic. And it's like, I was like, wow, I was really, really impressed. Uh, a few points of articulation that was missed on there. And the only reason that they did get the downgraded score is because of the way that they, they freaking plastic tied those damn swords down and bent them. There's no point in it. It was underneath the figure. The figure was zipped down. There's no point to zip down the weapons underneath the figure. It's just yeah. asinine. Uh, if it wasn't for that, this thing would have definitely got a 10 out of 10, even with the fact that it can't kneel down because there just isn't quite enough range of movement to make them mm -hmm. kneel. Even with that, and that's a big gripe of mine, even with that out of the way, if they didn't bend the swords, it would have got a 10 out of 10 because I think the look is fantastic. Yeah. Damn. I like it. I thought it looked really good. Did you see the uh, – I, I don't know if this is Series 2. Did you see that they actually have uh, Casey Jones as well? I, I, I heard that they're going to have a lot more. And it's kind of weird because in the uh, the comic, they don't talk about Casey coming through. Mm -hmm. So in the early comic that I have, which I'm assuming is the first one, uh, they show Shredder, they show Krang, and Krang's got a completely different look as well as Shredder. Uh, Skeletor, uh, the first villain that pops up is actually Mousejaw. And the turtles come through the portal and then they start – fighting him and all his uh, mousers because he's got like a whole horde of mousers with him. Nice. And then, of course, you get Duncan and Tila. And they already talked about uh, He-Man, Man-at-Arms, and Mossman went to go investigate the portal and never came back. And I do know in the line that all three of them are evil. The He-Man one is already out. He's been mutated. And yeah. at the end of the comic, you see him where Skeletor brings him out and he's all purple. So Mossman gets mutated as well as uh, Ram-Man. Nice. It looks like he's got Jinsu's hand. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's Very a lot nice. of stuff. Hell yeah. It's almost like that Ram Man extra shield face, though, with the, the full face. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, come to think, yeah, you're right. <clears throat> Who had that hammer? Because that looks familiar, too. I'm blanking on that one. But that, that is interesting, though, the, the whole look and everything they have here. Pretty damn nice. Now, I, I'm I am pretty impressed with the series, so I'm definitely going to go back. I'm going to get the He-Man and um, nice. the Donatello. Um, I, I got to get lucky, though. Like that Leonardo one, I'd seen it once before, didn't have the money, and then I didn't see it again for a couple weeks. And I just happened to get paid. I just had the money. I went in, and they had him sitting there, and that's why it came right off the peg. I was like, yep, that's mine. I would have loved to have gotten the rest of my scene that they had for this first wave, but I did not have that kind of funds at the time. So, yeah, there he is, the there evil is. mutated Ram Man. Yeah. Holy crap! Yeah, they were turning into a real Ram or something. It's like I think I think they they, they mix him with Beast Man, maybe. Uh, no, his feet have like hooves. It's like they're really trying to change, change him into some kind of goat animal Ram thing or something. Uh, and his hand, yeah, look at his hands too. I mm -hmm. like that they did the translucent on them. That's pretty cool. Yeah, like er everything mm -hmm. I've seen so far from this series, and I've only gotten the two figures out of, out of the five, but yeah. everything I've seen so far for him, yeah, big win for Mattel and uh, the TMNT line for Playmates. Uh, big win. I could do the voice of that character. Nice. What's that? He says he could do the voice of that character. Oh, nice. Yeah. That Raphael looks pretty sharp. Yeah. He's pretty fucking badass. Yeah, I haven't seen the turtles in store. Uh, so, yeah, like the Leo you showed and, uh, and this dude. Yeah, they look really good. Cool. That's why I don't go to meetups. <laughs> huh? Uh, Papa, this is why I don't go to meetups. Oh, <laughs> oh shit. You said you returned and you didn't talk to me toys. <laughs> These things are amazing. That's a fact, Jack. Right? There he is. Hey, I got a five figure salary. That's at least five figures a month I can buy. Giggity. <laughs> Pretty much, right? I'm tapped out yeah. this one. <laughs> Pretty much, brother. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, look at that, man. Just amazing. Yeah, it's amazing good. stuff. Mm -hmm. It's good to see finally, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. We we were around when we had good toys, and then they went to shit. We're tired of shit, so mm -hmm. give us good stuff. Yeah, and that they're going back to, like, you know, more fun-looking things. It, it doesn't have to be hyper-realistic or anything. You can do something different. Well, if they don't do it right, people will just figure it out and do it on their 3D printers and then share the thing to do it. You know what I mean? They kind of got their asses to the wall. They don't have a choice. Yeah, that is true. Once I the still, 3D printers came out, you know. I, know. I still like these animated uh, versions. Oh, yeah, the cartoon ones. Uh, yeah, yeah, Steve and I have been talking about them. And, yeah, they are absolutely fantastic looking I, as well. I saw this one in a comic shop. That's the only reason why I didn't get it because, you know, they always jack the prices up, but. He, it looked really good. They had him, uh, Tila, Man at Arms, and Skeletor, which uh, looked really good. Yeah, it was a Skeletor. Yeah, they, they look better in person than they do in the photos. Yeah, it, it, I get a Castle Grayskull, it'll be when I win the lottery, and then, Vinny, you're going to tell them how to build it right. Well, I can't even imagine <laughs> that they would make another Castle Grey Skull because they really wouldn't have to change much. I mean, they didn't really alter it much in the cartoon. So, I mean, I think it would be, I mean, maybe for the people that missed out on Castle Grey Skull the first time around with the Origins line, but I can't even imagine that they would need to make it again. Well, I just want a real one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> talking about yeah. like living in the Castle Grey Skull, not the toy, Tommy. Oh shit! Yeah. I always said it'd be great to to recreate the uh, Resident Evil mansion. Oh yeah, that'd be pretty sick too. 
But I don't know, dude. After you're drawing a gray skull, I think I want you to sit there and then you're going to sit down with the tech guys and be like, you know, the architects and go, this is what we're doing. Because, you know, you've got an eye for that kind of thing. Just saying. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. That's a little bit more of my past. Though. Yeah. Well, with ETEP, you know, deciding to be uh, reading Skeletor anyway, then he can have Snake Mountain, you know, mm -hmm. since he's north of me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty oh, incredible shit. stuff. Um, yeah, well, awesome. I'm gonna cl I'm gonna close out tonight's show with the uh, the toy time, but um, we're not mm -hmm. getting into that right now. So we're gonna get into discussions about some of the stuff that we've uh, seen. Uh, Slasher had already brought up something earlier with Lemmy, so I wanted to bring this up for you, Venny. Okay. GI Joe Classified Series Number One Thirty Seven: Tiger Force Wreckage and Tiger Paul ATV. Oh, okay. Oh shit. That's pretty cool. I can blow this up a little bit. Oh, yeah. The ATV looks good. Look at all that little detail. They even put it with the exhaust stickers and everything. Yeah. That's pretty neat. So Boy, they they really are going uh, full full force with these uh, Tiger, uh, Tiger Force line. Yeah. Yeah. It, it works. I, I think it looks pretty good on this one. Yeah, like this doesn't look half bad compared to a lot of the other Tiger Force ones I've seen. Yeah, I like that when, when they attempt to do vehicles. I know the yeah. uh, uh, what was it, the Vamp? Um, no, and the Ferret. Yeah, those look freaking good. What was the one that they did with Duke and the Ferret Tiger Force? Seen. They did oh, the, the bike. I saw that one last. Yeah, week. yeah, I, yeah. The I bike lost, was a repaint. Yeah, yeah, he I was, was a repaint found. with the sidecar. Uh, with the mm -hmm. Gatling gun on it. Well, here, here you go, Vinny. Uh, this might make you happy. We were talking about it earlier. Oh, shit. Beachhead. Yeah, if they're carding him now. Yeah, fuck. When did this come out? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I forget. They're, 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 right now, they're just talking about what's coming out. I don't even think these were up for pre-order yet. Mm. So, But they're coming. They're You're on like, the way. Give me, give me time. <clears throat> Holy shit. That's like there was nothing for a while. Now everything's coming out all at once. That's the way it always works, though. <laughs> What's that? Uh, if I won the lottery, I'd need a super bunker. <laughs> yeah, tell me right? about it. Like Zuckerberg. No, no problem, Chaos. No, no problem. I'd want a real one that nobody fucking knew about, though. Everybody knows where his is, so we can just go take his shit. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Alex Jones said that the people who were building his bunker... They said that, uh, yeah, if anything goes down, they go, oh, we, we can get in there so easily. We'll, yeah. we'll go in there and drag his ass out. <laughs> I mean, it's the movie Fight Club. Nobody thinks about this shit, right? But you can uh -huh. just talk by Fight Club and, duh, you know, uh, blast from the past. There was a reason why the father literally built the underground shelter with different people. And you know, we're getting so right back into funny. toys because we're not talking politics. Thank you very little. <laughs> uh, so you we're going to get right into what else have I seen from uh, Pulse? So they also have the Marvel Legends. I really don't even know who would be interested in this shit. Yeah, no. Not a fan. Uh, yeah, I've seen, I those, was, I've seen those too. Yeah, I was never interested in Wasp and Freaking. But why have, why have a regular size Wasp figure? <laughs> yeah. And a regular size giant one. Well, I, I guess they're trying to picture him as the ant thing because they also had this thing, which I couldn't seem to find any more information about it. They didn't have anything because every time I went to search for it, they said this page can't be found. So from HasLab, uh, the, the backer type thing, the giant man backer. Yeah, it failed, didn't it? I, I don't know. I couldn't find it anything out it. else about it. And I just recently received this email within the past day or so. So this was pretty recent. I got the email about it. So if it already failed, because uh, um, <laughs> they were probably charging way okay. too much for it. So yeah, maybe this is the second attempt at it then. Because I thought maybe. I saw photos of him a long time ago, but I could be wrong. Well, they had uh, a huge Lego one, Vinny. Yeah, they had that, and and I know they did like um. It was a toy biz build a figure. Yes, yes build a figure. I was, I was yeah, say that. yeah, the build a figure. Because they use parts of him for the Galactus as well. And they, and they like, yeah, yeah I, I have a, that incomplete. I have, a, he's missing a leg and two arms. Oh. This is a leg it's a, arm. you know, if, if he could stand, he would be a great Son leg. of a bitch. Oh, by the uh, way, I, I forgot to show the, uh, there was one more turtle one uh, before we get back into that. I forgot. Okay. 
here's the uh, here's the beast man in the samurai. Yes. <laughs> a pretty good paint job on him. That's interesting. There you go. That looks freaking cool. I, I don't care. I, I Dude, the love, face, excellent on that one. I love Holy what shit. they're doing with this series. This is just amazing shit. Yeah, these are cool. That's why I said, yeah, yeah. Let me get that one in there too. But yeah, all right. Go but on. um, back to the uh, the the, uh, the last couple ones I have are, are Transformers related. So Papa, have another drink. Uh, once again, they're they're basically just rehashing stuff they've already got out. So the War for Cybertron video game, Optimus Prime, and then they're doing, I guess, a re-release of the Leader Class Earthrise Optimus Prime, which okay. is kind of odd. I mean, I know it's 40th anniversary, mm -hmm. but they've got that 86 Optimus Prime that's going to be coming out. Like, I'm not really sure why they would re-release the Earthrise one. Yeah, what the hell? Wait, they haven't even shown photos of the other one, though, the 86 movie one, right? No, no, not yet. Okay. So they're probably that's probably postponed a little bit, I think, because of losses that they had. So they're probably pushing it for next year. Uh, so they're just re-releasing these just to get, kind of get people's uh, appetites wet. So okay, I well here's so. an Optimus Prime while you're well, waiting. Well, the well the all spark I think because the all spark sold out, and I think there's a bigger demand for the Earthrise again. So that they probably just went, all right, let's go back. We have the molds. Ooh, what the hell? Now, I will say that that War for Cybertron Gamer Edition one, man, that is a beautiful piece, though. And the Earthrise Optimus Prime, also yeah. a very excellent, very See, excellent uh, piece. Those Maybe are two. Why, though, Tommy? Because it was a pretty good seller, wasn't it? Yeah. I, it, I think... it, it was until some of the stores got overstocked. Gotcha. With which one? The Earthrise Optimus Prime. Okay. See, I, I never really saw a problem with that because he always sold. He came in and he he went out just as fast as he came in. He was never just sitting on shelves. You know where a few of them popped up? Ollie's. Ollie's. Yep. Get the, really. Yep. Holy yeah. shit. I was actually for? quite surprised myself because I was like, "Wow!" I, like, because I, I, I've rarely seen it in Target, so I don't know what store had got a bunch of them in and couldn't move them. But yeah, they wound up in Ollie's. That's a good question. Holy shit! And what was the price on them? Um, I forget what they were. They were a lot cheaper than what they were on the store shelves. But they're, um, those are long gone, though, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's a very long time wow. ago. I yeah, picked up crazy. a few, and I picked up a few, and I sold a few. Yeah. Um, but whatever it was, it wasn't nowhere near to like fifty or sixty dollars they were on the shelf. Yeah. See, and this is the thing that pissed me off too, because I had I had him in my hands that gamer one. I'm like, he looks nice, but do I really need another Optimus? And then, like, after you did the review, I'm like, damn, that looked good. And then the other, the, I missed out on the Megatron. He's another one I had in my hands, but the price tag was too much. It was yeah, the, con it, the, the concept design from the Bumblebee movie. Mm -hmm. And he, apparently, he's some kind of a triple changer. And they said his robot mode is fantastic. I didn't realize how articulated that figure was and just how incredible it truly was. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit. And well, that, that's why when they came, when they re-released the gamer edition of Megatron, I didn't sleep on it because I did sleep on the kingdom version of Megatron. Yeah. Because I figured, oh, well, it, it can't be that much different than the Cybertron one. And it actually was. And I never seen it again. I seen it once and then never seen it again. What was but, different um, about it? Yeah. When I picked up the Gamer Edition Megatron, I was pretty impressed with that one, too. So, I mean, they have been doing some of these ones, like, great. Uh, then, they, you know, you always get the few that are just kind of, like, lackluster at best. Like, that Cliff Jumper one. Yeah. You really insulted my pig with that Hasbro. Oh, really oh, insulted him. Remember. Damn. But um, I, I, I want to I talk about this real quick while we're on Transformers. And uh -huh. this is technically not toy-related, but it kind of is because it harkens back to the early days of the toys mm -hmm. and how they promoted them. So everybody knows that Hasbro used the uh, triple method of promoting all their toys. They did it with G.I. Joe. What they did it with a comic. They did it with a cartoon. And they did it with traditional ads. Uh, Transformers did the same thing. Cartoon, comic, traditional ads. And one of the uh, early cartoons that they did technically that very first four part was and i've talked about this before was supposed to be a short movie mm -hmm. but it was easier to break it up and put it as a cartoon of course it gained enough popularity that they were able to continue from that four and then just continue on with a series that went for uh four seasons uh, even though the fourth season was very shortened uh i've seen this 
So uh, coming for May 15th, 18th, and 19th in select theaters, they're playing the original four episodes of the Transformers cartoon in the movie theaters with an exclusive table read with Peter Cullen and Frank Welker and then more surprises, they say. That this is, is something I am excited for. I definitely want to go to the theater and see this to get the finally get the big screen showing of that original cartoon that it was actually intended to be. That is so cool. I'm glad they're doing something like that. She... Yeah, man. So it's fine. It's going to be by you. Are you going to be able to? Actually... Yes, they they do have one out in Fort Myers, uh, not very far from me. So. That's excellent, bro. Unfortunately, the uh, theater uh, in question that mm -hmm. has it, uh, my wife dubs it the uh, pee-smelling theater. So oh, uh, th there, there is that. Smells <laughs> <laughs> like a little wee-wee. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> this would really be a devastating drinking game. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, speak, speaking of which, uh, yeah, prepare to get drunk yet again. Uh, here is – I found the photos of them. Uh, this Megatron. So it was a concept design. He was actually supposed to be in the Bumblebee movie. And I they cut him out. Um, and I think they're retarded for doing it. So, uh, yeah. Could you imagine this version? Like in that Cybertronian part and all that crap? Like that would have been killer. Oh, wait. Hell yeah. Better than the Michael Bay garbage. Yeah. There was his tank mode. And he's supposed to have some kind of jet mode. But um, I didn't see it on the photos here. But. But yeah, I, I had him literally in my hands. I'm like, ah, it's just the price tag was too much at the time. But yeah, there it is. There's like the jet. And it's kind of surprising it didn't go because later on in the comics, they did do it uh, as a bomber. Uh, have a good mm -hmm. one time, Prophet. Yeah, have a good Before one. Where I am there. Yeah, have a good one. Thanks for being I, here. Oh, wow. But yeah, but, he, uh, yeah he, I'm he surprised they didn't do the bomber instead of the plane. Now, I will say in, in the uh, Machine Wars line, mm -hmm. which was on the tail end of Beast Wars, they did do Megatron as a jet in that one. Granted, it was a tiny jet, mm -hmm. but they did do him. And they also had Megatron's clone, who was called Megaplex, who, if you went from the G1 line, was like a, a Comic-Con exclusive repaint of the original Walter P-38 Megatron. Okay. It, just, it had like the blue insides and everything, and they called him Megaplex. So oh, That's cool. <laughs> nice. Which is different from Metroplex. It's Megaplex. Me Right, and my wife gets so confused over that. Yeah, it's not <laughs> Autobot. I, I keep telling her all yeah. you have to do is think of city. City is metro, yep. metroplex. <laughs> there you go. You know, bam. And, and yeah. agreed, agreed, Soul Assassin. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep, that was the best part of the freaking thing. I don't. I still don't understand why they won't just have a proper Transformer movie in Cybertron. What What is so fucking complicated about doing that? I, I keep saying that if they would have did the, what they started doing in the Bumblebee and then just made it all on Cybertron, no humans and everything, give the fans what they really want to see, the beginning of the war and everything mm -hmm. on Cybertron. I mean, yep. they kind of hinted on a little bit in the Netflix version, but of course that was a shortened version with 30-minute episodes. It, I'm not saying that shit was bad. But it was, it was a little bit on the rush side of how quickly you're already off Cybertron. They're like, go into like full detail of like the war on Cybertron. Like kind of hit at some of the stuff that we've seen in the early Marvel comics. Mm -hmm. It would absolutely do, it would do gangbusters. It oh, would. for sure, dude. Uh, absolutely. Slasher. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, since you were uh, talking about that Joe vehicle, I brought up the other two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. There's the... Uh... The, I Look guess, at that fucking price, bro. What's the price? A hundred bucks? Jesus. Wow. Yeah, Tommy, I thought that's what the Bumblebee movie would be good for, is there, like, you know, literally launching in the right direction, and you could be like, okay, here's what they escaped from, and you would be in the Cybertronian War. Yeah. Sorry, I wanted to get it out before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, dude, yeah, a hundred percent. There are things they could have done to really make these things amazing, but nope. They fucking dropped the ball. Dude, obviously, yeah, my jaw's hitting the floor because this thing looks so good. I love Did that vamp. And you know, I had the original one and I, I still can't recall. I have the I desert back. one. I still have I have the desert one. It was such a well made oh. toy, that vamp. Yeah. I swear You also notice these these things with all these new Joes with the vehicles. They're giving them the steel brigade helmets. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's interesting. Well, at least it, I mean, they're throwing it as an extra. It's not just that that's the only head it comes with, you know. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying it's just like cool. they're making instead of Steel Brigade being one guy, like because mm-hmm. like, back in the day he was one of the fucking send away. You had to send away for these motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah mail aways. Yeah. Yep. Uh, which, which I've talked about that before. We still have the one that my brother had gotten mailed to him, uh, including the little uh, the bio card and everything that he sent mm-hmm. from Hasbro with stats and all. Oh that yeah, stuff. yeah, dude, that looks so good. Man. Yeah, the, yeah, Barrett. I, yeah, I, I, I like, like that, that fucking uh, that helmet. It's fucking awesome. I love that shit. <laughs> oh yeah, like the motocross helmet, dude. That's pretty fucking sweet. It's got fangs. Did you see that? <laughs> and this is out already too, or? Pre-order, it says. Pulse uh, Premium only. Oh, these people go. April fourth. Why? No, they. they this guy was also saying that sometimes they were up for regular order if they didn't. I don't know. Like he was saying, like it's up for regular order now. Uh, this guy Preternia. Okay. Know, well, yeah. It, well, here's what they're they've been doing on Pulse now, Vinny, with some of these things. So they're giving the piece, people that have Pulse Premium the ability to pre-order before anybody else. Yeah, so they could they could sell out, and then you got to wait for uh, like six months later to actually get the damn thing. These, mm-hmm. these people are scumbags, is what they are. But again, like even that's this, why that's why I won't go there. Bucks. Even this one is like fucking fifty four ninety nine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they did the same stupid thing with Serpentor, and he was like one hundred and fifty bucks or two hundred and fifty. It was like a retarded price. I'm like, are you kidding me for a figure in the chariot, dude? It, it should have been the same price as that thing at, at most. Man, they just yeah. ah, fifty bucks. Yeah, <laughs> I, and, and and they they wonder they wonder why people are like, yeah, we're not buying anything right now. Well, like I was saying earlier, I did notice some of those prices, and I, I'm hoping that that's a permanent markdown price. Maybe Hasbro has finally learned their lesson because a lot of these stores are not restocking a lot of their shit, and it runs down the whole gamut of everything that's Hasbro. Uh, G.I. Joe, Transformers, Marvel, all of them are not being restocked in most of my stores. And you're seeing like a small spattering of new stuff that's coming out, and that's about it. So maybe they finally learned their lesson. And maybe some of those prices that I see knocked down in Target, maybe they're legit permanent knockdown prices. Uh, That makes me really interested to see what the prices are going to be in Walmart, since Walmart always tends to sell lower than Target. Yeah. We'll see. But yeah, Walmart, man, I don't see any more G.I. Joe figures. The only thing they have are those carded ones that won't sell. Um, Lady J. You know who I still see there all the time? I still see Shipwreck for 14 bucks. Wow. That's crazy. He's one of the ones that he was selling out so fast, and then they got like extra orders of him in, and then they wouldn't move anywhere. Is that that one that you got, Vinny? Yeah. And did the review on? Yep. I okay. think I saw one of him at, at my wall. Well, the Walmart's a little bit further away than where I normally go to, but I haven't seen him anywhere else, though. Uh, so, Assassin, you were not wrong. Uh, Ollie's is making a killing because they get so many of these damn figures on clear discount because these stores yep. can't sell them. And they're actually getting them for what the legit cost of the figures uh-huh. are because those prices you're seeing in the stores, they're marked up. So yep. when ha- and that's one of the things that really pisses me off about Hasbro Pulse is they're yep. sitting there, they're telling, they're selling you retail prices in the stores, knowing that when they sell, send them to the stores, the stores mark them up to sell them on their shelves, so they're not charging the stores anywhere near that freaking price that they're charging on their own site. So they're really ripping off the fans that are going to their site to buy shit. That is that is like oh, that is just disgusting what they're doing. And it's the same reason why I don't like the idea, you know, buying anything from their site anymore because it's just a fucking ripoff. But Ollie's is getting them for basically probably less than what the – or they're probably getting base costs from these stores. So Mm -hmm. Ollie's is not paying much for them. So when they're selling them for $9.99, that's pretty much telling you what some of those figures that are normally selling for $24, $25, or whatever in the regular stores cost that Ollie's can sell them for $9.99 and still turn a profit. Yep. That's crazy. You know, well, because you know as well as I do, cost is probably like a nickel. Well, uh, no, it's not that cheap. But, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, figures, they, you know they, cost a, I mean. yeah, they cost a couple of bucks. But, yeah, yeah it's, it's not the astronomical freaking numbers that, you know, they've been pulling. I don't know, man. It, it's all nuts. 
I, I know chaos. I know. Um, Hasbro has been picking up their game lately. I, I will give credit when credit is due, but they really need, just need to completely step it all the way up. Uh, stop half-assing it. Uh, you can prove that you can sit there and compete with all these other companies. McFarland is another one that's on the slide right now. Nobody wants to carry his shit either. They're not yep. really restocking his trash anymore. Now's the time that these other companies, like Mattel, Mattel making big moves with freaking Playmates to do the TMNT crossover, and it's selling, yep. the, selling the hell out. Uh, mm -hmm. They, I think, I think they've learned their lesson with the mutant mayhem shit that it doesn't sell. And uh, I, I, I did it last week. I'd seen some of them at our local BJ's wholesale club uh, for like six dollars or five dollars or whatever the hell it was. I was, just, I was dying. I was that's like, funny. yeah, that's about what they should have been priced at in the first place because they're freaking junk. But nobody, still nobody mm -hmm. wants to buy those damn things. You put the classic figures out there, sell out. You put these freaking crossovers, the Turtles of Grayskull, selling mm -hmm. the hell out. This is what the fans want to pay for. Mm -hmm. Give us good quality product, shit that looks good, shit yep. that kind of harkens back to the old days while giving us something more modern, and mm -hmm. you are going to make bank. That's yep. all you need to do. It's a very simple formula to follow. If you don't understand, you can hire Vinny and I, and we will tell you everything over the phone, what you need to do, and we'll send you in the right direction. And if you don't like it, if yep. you're having problems with employees, we'll come down to those places and we'll smack everybody in their peepees. Uh -huh. <laughs> in their peepees. <laughs> oh, shit. That was funny. Oh, man. But I, on the brighter side, too, uh, from what I've seen, it looks like uh, they are making a step in the right direction. They're doing an R-rated Turtles, uh, the Ronin um, comic book. They're actually doing an animated movie of that, and it's going to be R-rated. R-rated Turtles? Very nice. i yep. seen somebody did like a fan version of it, and that mm -hmm. looked amazing. I wonder if they contacted the person that did that because it, it looked That's incredible. Question. That is a good question. And fingers crossed uh, that it's not a complete mess of a movie, but apparently they are going ahead. They're greenlit Transformers and G.I. Joe movie. Oh, so shit. Yeah. They, it's they not going to be a steaming it. pile of fucking dog shit. Yeah, yeah, I hope not. Uh, I, I, I hope that they, they do it right this time. Um, yeah. Okay. And, and what's going on, Curtis, man? Good to see you. I understand. YouTube never notifies yeah. it. I am the most hated guinea pig on YouTube, Curtis. You should know that by now. Mm -hmm. they, they, no, they don't like to know to any button, notify anybody that I'm alive. Well, don't worry. I, I'm right there with you, especially with all the shorts that I had put up. <laughs> Those presidential ones. I, they're not fans. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, hey, you know what? They did help my channel in a massive way, so I don't care. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're not crazy about the uh, the live sh the, well notifying people for our live streams. We know that for a fact. Jesus, it, it kind of is what it is with the, these people, you know. Ugh, yeah. They 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 just get on my nerves. Uh, they really do. I'm rated R TMNT. Yeah, yeah. if they do rest last Ronin, it's going to have to be rated R. R -rated if they do it TMNT. right, it'll be a banger. R rated yeah. TMNT. That would be like that would be awesome if they did like. Uh, crossover with basic instinct <laughs> i'm telling you that and, and Por porkies there you go porkies Ninja Turtles. god porkies that never redo that movie that thing was perfect the way it no, was. I, mean a Ninja, <laughs> I mean a ninja turtles figure is how the turtle version are they whoring off all the uh, other franchises can april be the howler yeah or <laughs> no lassie lassie that's what it was lassie oh, man. Why do you call her Lassie? Yeah. You'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Holy oh, shit. But um, that, is, is that everything, Vin? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Uh, All right, you're tapped out. Yeah, yeah, I'm tapped out. Slasher? Yeah, I'm good. Adam? I'm good. All right. Um, well, I'll get into our uh, last clip here. Uh, we're going to take it back old school because that's what we do here. So uh, this is some of the old school stuff that I got hanging out in the garage because I have no place to bring it indoors. Here is your old school toy time. Here we go with your Old school toy time. We got another Tonka right here. Mighty Tonka Roller. This thing is still in really good condition. Another one I've had since I was a kid. Shit, man. Were these things built to last? You can see uh, they even have a little steering wheel in there, too. 
Crap. I don't remember exactly when this one was made. There was no stamping or dates on it, but I know this thing had to have been made at least in the 70s. Here we go with old school toy time. We've got some old tech deck stuff here. Uh, radio controlled dude skateboard, and there's a whole bunch of other little guys in there as well. All that going on. We got this magnetic feet and rolling tech deck dude. Uh, we got a couple of the Grimms. So we got the, uh, the rabbit there and we got the wolf, little red riding hood. And then we have some of the creatures from tech deck exiles, omen, exile and sloth. And for giggles, uh, apparently we had a living dead doll too. Great. Oh, so the year I, I I looked it back up for the um the steamroller, it was 1975. Oh wow. Dude, yeah, that, that was amazing. Was the roller part die cast as well? No, that was actually plastic. Oh, that was plastic. Okay. Yeah, so the wheels are plastic, the roller was plastic, and of course, like the interior was plastic. The um the little diesel uh tank and an exhaust piece that's on the side is actually rubber. Mm -hmm. So Okay. I've seen some of these things. I started looking them up on eBay, and I seen ones that look like they were run over with a real steamroller, all smashed up, selling for forty, fifty dollars. Oh, wow. I was like, really? I was like, okay. Nice to know that if I had to sell my Tonka, I'd probably get seventy-five or more for it. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Those things probably only cost when I was a kid. They probably five, ten dollars tops. Mm -hmm if they were even that much. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. And that's, that's die cast and plastic. So yeah, that, that's impressive. It was only five bucks. Get out of here. Soul assassin. They better not pick. <laughs> oh, geez. Yeah. Curtis, I know uh, they hate you too. And, uh, they messing with your comments and shit. That's just absolutely ridiculous. That like, uh, so stupid. They hate everybody who has, uh, you know, if you're under a million subscribers, they don't give a shit about us. Oh, Curtis said he had two metal dumpsters. I do have a metal dump dump truck in there somewhere. It's actually got um gas activated uh lift on the back end of yeah. the truck, but it's not Tonka. It's by a Canadian company. So. Oh yeah. I had a, a Tonka one. It was rusty as hell. That was another murder weapon. <laughs> that, that was that was one that like if you throw it across the room you're gonna fucking kill somebody if it connects yeah easily now papa had a dump truck and a front loader nice uh curse as always curtis is sharing everybody's links out there appreciate that curtis thank you so much for doing that uh, chaos yes fuck we are old <laughs> <laughs> you're only as old as you feel and i, I feel yeah. like i'm still like i don't know maybe in my early 20s so i i think i'm good Okay, well that's good. <laughs> Most days I, I open my eyes, I'm like, <laughs> I feel 175 years old, right? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh shit! I feel like I crawled out of my own coffin. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Punched my way out. Must be, must be that white privilege. He's got a coffin over here. Listen to him bragging. <laughs> no, I'm not in my, I'm not in my house. Not in my house. I'm talking about in the fucking graveyard. I oh, know. Shit. Like I came back from my own fucking week. <laughs> I know I'm stoned, but that's fucking funny, right, Vinny? <laughs> that's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> uh, what on uh, YouTube, Papa? You're trying to trying to upload to YouTube again? Oh yeah, good luck. Uh, oh, they did. Uh, it's just been so ridiculous with shit yep. lately. It drives me nuts. Uh, yeah, Curtis says he cleaned up the dumpster as much as he could. And think he gave it to his sister, but they probably threw it away. Mm. They're pretty tore up anyway. Well, even the ones that are tore up, like I, I'm seeing the prices on them. It's like wow, uh, I didn't never imagine something that busted up. Like they had one of the steamrollers. The whole top cab section was crushed all the way down. All the plastic inside was broke. The low yeah. exhaust, rubber exhausting was tore off. One wheel was completely torn out from the uh, the um, what would be the metal axle. 
the the back end of the steamroller was just completely torn out and missing <laughs> and there were huge chunks taken out of the steamroller part and they like i said they were still selling that thing for around like 45 to 50 dollars <laughs> It's like for what? That thing is like scrap. There's hardly anything on it that's usable. Mm -hmm. Shit. Not nah, no more YouTube. Oh, okay, you're uploading twatters. Mm. That's another one. If you only get, figure out how to freaking monetize on there. Oh yeah, that's right. There's 10 million steps to do it on there too. Yay! Getting fucked everywhere. And they're always. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that that is about all we have for this toy stream. Um, I think we consider eBay, but nobody wants to deal with them. Yeah, you know what? Back then, nobody did. But there's once again, there's been a huge resurgence in retro stuff again, mm -hmm. and uh, there's the retro resurgence is extending all the way into the '90s and everything. Because a lot of these kids that grew up in the '90s and even some of the early 2000s they're getting that bug now as well and a lot of this stuff even from early 2000s is now worth money so uh if you have old stuff like that right now is the market to look into the retro selling because there's a lot of people buying the older stuff right now so um definitely check it out um next week i know i am not going to be available for the toy stream Okay. So we have something going on. I'll explain it in the back room. So um, okay. I, I don't know if you want to just take the whole week off. Uh, maybe. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll play it by ear because uh, I got to see. If, think I might have some stuff next week as well. To be honest. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I want to let you guys know too. There's there's something else I heard. Some uh, I think pretty good news because uh, Tommy and I we were watching this series. Apparently. Uh, Monarch Legacy of Monsters, it got renewed for a season two. Oh, hot damn! And I just canceled, Plus, canceled my Apple subscription. <laughs> oh, shit. Plus, there's a spinoff as well they're going to be doing. So, uh, there's some news. I'll look more into it for tomorrow's stream. Yeah, because tomorrow at five, uh, we're going to be covering Shogun, some more craziness that's been going on in the world. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll probably hit a little bit of this uh, Monarch uh, topic as well. So, Oh, yeah. Tune in tomorrow at 5 over on my channel at awesome. Vineyard. Uh, guys, uh, Curtis has been posting the links over on uh, my chat. And, of course, if you look, if you stop on YouTube, you look in on the bottom of mine or the bottom of videos, you will see the description for everybody's channels. Everybody's been on the panel. Uh, most of the people that are in the chat right now as well. Uh, Papa, I still haven't updated yours. Uh, so sorry about that. But I got to really put your, your Twitter on there as well. Uh, just maybe I'll just uh, ah, I'll put your new YouTube on there too, even though you don't want to use it. I'll put it up there anyway. But um, yeah, everybody's links are there. Uh, Adam, uh, anything you got going on? Uh, yeah. Um, I don't know what is today. Uh, yeah, you'll see me Monday uh, at the place to be reviews, brother. I mean, other than that, I haven't got a clue. I'll be on with Vinny tomorrow, of course, but um. Nice. Yeah, other than that, no, I've got nothing going on. It's a busy weekend, which we'll talk about off air. So, yeah. Oh, Adam, did you see the Godzilla movie or no? The, movie? The... No. Did I see the um, Shogun? Yes. Okay. All right. Just double check. I, I don't have a theater near me anymore because the asshole. Right, anyway. right. Yeah. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. mm. The Biden, Biden inflation. Um, a slasher uh th thanks as always buddy uh, it's always great having you on here as a, another co-host um i know you don't have nothing going on that right nope. now but anything you want to tell everybody out in the chat uh, how's it going all right man uh, uh, always man you, you're i mean you are automatically here regardless uh unless you can't make it and we understand uh trina who couldn't make it tonight um i hope everything works out uh, i hope that you guys had a good night and thank you to everybody who's been watching on all sides of social media we do appreciate you coming in and we hope that you had a good time this is what we do every week try to avoid some of the misery that everybody else suffers in and we talk about things that we're enjoying talk about that toy collecting watch us waste all our money people it's a lot of fun uh <laughs> and Tommy, yeah if yeah if you want I me mean, we'll hit a little bit of, of godzilla and kong tomorrow as well because yeah. i know we have we haven't talked about that yet no we haven't so we i haven't mean i kind of gave you my just early quick thoughts on it but that was all i gave you because yep. you said you were planning on seeing it so right so yeah we'll, we'll cover that overall I'm, I'm with you man i i did enjoy it for the most part yeah i, I think it was a good movie a lot of fun
Awesome. Um, guys, uh, also don't forget, uh, Vinny has comics out there that are available. They ship immediately. Be sure to check out the links uh, in the descriptions on either yeah. one of our channels. Please do. Yeah, I, I, over I, there. Hey, and I got some more of those He-Man uh, drawings up as well. So people, if you're looking for original artwork, we have two new He-Man pieces. We have a She-Ra. Uh, people have been asking for She-Ra. So she's up as well. Uh, the Beast Man, he's still available. I, I love that Beast Man. He's one of my favorites. That so, thing is incredible. Yeah, man. So, yeah, if you guys if you want some good shit, we got it. So, uh, and all my stuff, it, it ships immediately. You know, you get a nice piece of artwork. And, uh, uh, yeah, well, if you buy the original artwork, you also get the, uh, the book with that. And, uh, yeah, all my stuff does ship immediately. We got Ghost Book uh, that's still available through the woods. City of Venus, a futuristic uh, world with hot babes. Um, I'm working on the sequel. Uh, uh, Shadow of the Kraken, Pirate Store, if you want that. Um, the art books, uh, the, there's going to be more stuff coming soon, so I'll, I'll get into that when I get a chance. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what's going on with that, uh, but yeah. So sort of a second chance uh, at something. I, I think that is a perfect way to end this stream. Uh, Goonie Goo Goo, y'all. Um, <laughs> everybody have an awesome night. And um, we'll, we'll catch you on the next one. Uh, whether or not Vinny runs the uh, toy stream next week, um, I, I know I just I won't be able to attend. But um, yeah, we'll, have a we'll good give one, updates uh, whether we could or we can. Uh, but, yeah, uh, we'll see what happens. Everybody have a good one. Remember, never let anybody tell you what you can and can't say, what you should or should not think because your silence and your compliance gives consent. We'll catch you down the road. Peace. Peace. You better run, Mojito. You what? I thought you said don't move. That was before. Now, you run. <laughs> <laughs>